The podcast on Haunted Hill will contain spoilers and swearing. I am the devil, and I am here to do the devil's work. I saw this Michael. Be one of us. I didn't tell you my name. Hang up. I didn't tell them my name. Hello and welcome to the podcast on Haunted Hill 103, 103, 301 backwards. My name's Gav, this is Dan. Dan, say hello. hello. We did that in rhyme always. Hello. Synchronization. Synchro- <laughs> How are you? I'm very, 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 very good, thanks. Lots of berries in there. How are you? Well, yeah, I've spent the weekend watching found footage movies. Well, that's a bit of a spoiler because that's what this episode is. We are returning to the genre of found footage, aren't we, for this mm. one? I love found footage movies. Yeah, um, it's um, it's definitely found, uh, you know, it all started obviously properly with Blair Witch. There's been one or two before then, but we've we've covered it before. We, we did a couple of found footage movies before. We, well, actually, we only did one. We did the Blair Witch and then we discussed the whole genre, but... Um, it's, it's one of those ones that's really exploded in the last sort of 10 or more years, hasn't it, really, subgenre wise? Yeah, well, Blair Witch was 2000, um, or 99. 99, yeah. And um, then it was after that, it's obviously the big ones, the uh, paranormal activity, but then you just had different, different, at different points, movies come out, and all of a sudden there's like the VHS series, and they were done by like fairly all right indie filmmakers. Um, and it just kept, it's just kept going and going and going. And then things like Amazon Prime. Bloody hell, if you want to go find a found footage movie, go on Amazon Prime, there's loads on there. Um, I have a found footage movie on there, which I created with some, with some dudes, which you're in, Dan. That's, yes. on, that's on there, pretty natural. Um, so, like, it, I don't know what it is with it. It's just got really popular. I think it's that whole, with people with mobile phones being able to film themselves, they've got used to that style. Um, you get the people who get the motion sickness type thing from the shaky cam. But I think people have got used to that style a bit more and watch a lot more stuff on YouTube. There's so many people doing that stuff themselves. So you're just taking what majority of people watch on YouTube. Like, here's a makeup tutorial or stuff like that. But then putting horror shit into it. It's easy yeah. done, it's cheap, uh, and it works. Basically, I mean, basically, it fits in with the way that we've evolved as humans <laughs> almost in the last 10 or 20 years, whereas we all stare at our little screens all the time. We watch a lot of things on laptops and phones. And I think horror has always been, um, there's always been a flooding, as it were, of uh, horror movies anyway, because they're, they're, you can make a horror movie quite cheaply, um, if, especially if you've got the right idea and you can do it quite sort of less is more, as you, you would say. But also the, with the subgenre of found footage, that suits it even more because you need even less of a budget, really, depending on what your film is about or Absolutely. what the concept is. Yeah. You know, and, and, and what we've seen in the last 10 years is the the genre of found footage is broken down into even more subgenres because you've got you know your paranormal activity so you've got your cctv style found footage movies but of late we've had quite a lot of these haunted house attraction or um found footage films haven't we yeah um, well like those those events themselves have got quite popular didn't they and uh, uh over in england now we've got like well apart from this year being a corona corona year um we had we started getting a few of the uh, attractions you could walk through and people going whoa and you're like what the fuck so it's yeah that yeah. stuff got really big and popular as well so yeah so we've got some of those movies I didn't uh, I haven't seen uh, Hell House obviously we're covering tonight that that deals with that in a brilliant way yeah. absolutely brilliant Hell House it's a if Hell House had came out you know earlier on around Paranormal Activity or before Paranormal or something like that you'd probably that'd have probably got um, more uh, popular success I think I think. I just think people haven't seen it, um, but I think mm. anybody who has seen it um, loves loves it. Well, um, and then and then you've got other, another movie which I like. We're probably getting into the conversation already, really. But another movie I like, similar to that, is um, uh, Houses October Bill. Right. Yeah. Um, I watched that for Halloween, and you my God, it, that you? terrified me. Yeah, I thought yeah. It was, I actually thought it's probably slightly better than How House, although How House is still terrifying. Yeah. Um, and then. 
there's another subgenre that's come out within frame footage, isn't there? That we've got your kind of your laptop horror. I don't know what you'd call it, really. <laughs> um, uh, but, uh, uh, well, it's it's like desktop. Uh, I don't know, actually. I don't know like, what you call. Well, it. I somebody asked me what once online on Facebook, and I said I'd call them backslashers. Do you get it? Because you backslash when you're typing and stuff. So, no. Are you writing so, crackers this year? <laughs> But I don't know, I, I think, you know, the ones I'm talking about, there's been a lot of these movies that unfriended, etc., where it all takes place through Skype or through messages. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of the best ones I've seen out of that bunch, actually, was... Um, what was the one that came out on Netflix about the guy whose daughter went missing? Yeah, Searching. Searching. That's brilliant. Yes. I'd actually, um, I actually picked up, before it was on Netflix, on DVD, I got a copy, because um, I saw the trailer, and I liked that dude, and I was like, well, if that dude's in it, he's not like a main A star... But he is in quite a lot of things. He, he is uh, Harold. American Pie. Harold um, and Kumar. Harold, Harold and Kumar, yeah. yeah um, American Pie. And he is... And in the movie, I was actually impressed by his acting. I thought he did a fucking bang-up job. Oh, he's also in Star Trek films, um, the oh, yeah, recent ones. Um, I thought he did a good job. But because he was in it, I was like, oh, so there's a little bit of money here. Because, like, I kind of expect... I don't know why, in some ways. It's just by the look of it and the art design as well. And it's just like, this looks like it's going to be a bit of a thriller. And it ends up being a bit of a, dare I say, Hitchcockian uh, type of thriller, found footage thriller, done fairly well with twists and mm. things and totally entertaining happily in my DVD collection cool well we'll get properly into fan footage in a moment Gav Indeed, um, let's I talk did. about what we are covering obviously guys as you probably guessed we are covering fan footage films so we picked a couple um, ones that we remembered really liking so we've already said we're covering Hell House LLC which came out in 2015 uh, so we'll be talking about that later on this episode. And the other one that we're going to be covering is a Bigfoot found footage film um, called Exists from 2014. Indeed. So that's the, the movies that we'll be covering, um, very closely released to each other. I guess rather than talk about, because I've not really talk, watched an awful lot re- really recently, um, but is there anything you want to talk about before we jump into the found footage discussion? Um, last night I watched. This is just gets on top of my head. Not that it's no, it's okay. I watched What Lies Beneath with Harrison Ford and Michelle Pfeiffer. Yeah, I went to see that at the cinema. It kind of scared that me a little bit. Um, scared right. you a bit? Oh, okay. At the cinema, yeah, but not now. <laughs> yeah, um, it's, it's 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 kind of a Hollywood ghost story. It's, it's all right. It's not, they're both uh, fairly. All right, actors. It's a bit more of an adult drama. Um, I think watching it as when it came out, uh, I was on a date, uh, kind of. Um, uh, I think it would, it was uh, probably like the wrong movie to watch. But at the time, I was just like, I want a horror movie. So it would have been like early two thousands, maybe two thousand one, probably. Um, yeah, it probably was around about them. Yeah, it's all right. It's not always good to see Harrison Ford in movies, though. You know. Yeah. That's well, it. Not That's, I haven't really got much more to tell you, to be honest. Um, been, yeah, do, been I, doing found footage films, and I'm going to mention those ones when we uh, jump into it. So. so let's get into it. So we've already talked about how, because it, the, the, the genre has changed so much since we last talked about it, really, um, which was probably about two or three years ago, we, we talked about found footage films. So what we thought we'd do, guys, is take a little look back through from 2010 through to 2020 and just have a chat about some of the films, not every single one, but some of the more prominent ones that came out um, in each of those years, just to sort of update ourselves and you guys on the sub-genre of found footage. Indeed, indeed. And you love it, Gav. You I... love this sub-genre. You've, you've always loved it. And I've got to be honest, it, it, it's a sub-genre that I've grown to love myself a lot in the last few years it's when done right of course yeah that's well that is the also the kind of hmm, it goes two ways it's the same with everything nowadays because everybody can do it at home everybody thinks they're a director me included you know everyone thinks they're a filmmaker (laughs) me included um (laughs) uh and you can self-distribute you can self-release even if you're just chucking it on youtube so it go. It's the same for everything though nowadays because you can do it. There's a mass abundance of it, so that kind of means there's a lot to go through. But because the internet, you can check out reviews, IMDb ratings, etc., etc. I generally find that they are pretty much what 
when you come watch the movie, you come out going, oh, it's eight point five. You go, yeah, I say it's eight point five. You know. Um, yeah. Speaking of which, we'll mention a movie. I did watch Parasite the other week. Oh, Parasite. I don't think I've seen that one. That's on Amazon Prime now. They've also released a black and white version on Amazon Prime as well. Uh, that is strange. Pretty good movie. Check it out. Okay. Um, yes. So found footage because there's such an abundance. It's 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 a case of going through and finding them. Um, but because everyone can do it, you do get the gems. You get a certain movies like, like oh wow, that was really good. Um, I watched a film from uh, Australia from 2017 called Found Footage. You, you know, you've also got like Found Footage 3D, which is another thing we can talk about. And and this movie, the uh, Australian flick, was just this dude next to camcorder, and he just sort of films what's going on for the next few days. And he ends up just murdering um, some women and stuff and stalks them a little bit. And it's really realistic because he doesn't seem that that violent it does it doesn't it seems like there's definitely some mental illness or something happened once upon a time and it feels very realistic um which is kind of i kind of i guess what you want but also slightly scary and i think that's what found footage does it gives you it takes you there um you're watching it through almost like another person's there it's almost like 3d or or vr and it is that's what found footage does and this movie does make it like when he gets on top of like a spoiler he stabs some women when he gets on top of a woman he stabs them when he walks up it doesn't cut so you watch the whole walk up then the stabbing and the sound effects are brilliant they were just very authentically done and then when he steps away the woman who's wearing a white dress she's lying in a park and in the the grass blood all over so obviously he had a blood pack and he was hitting that against her you know um it but it's done so so well. You're just like fucking hell. That was just brutal. Um, so, so that Where was one done, movie, uh, but that's quite full on. That's that's one scale of it. That's like really full on the scale of found footage. I think where it's done really well is where it really does blur that line between reality and um, you know and, and fiction. And I think that sometimes I've watched actual documentaries. There was that one recently that everyone was talking about. About was it the Killer Next Door? Was that the one? Yeah. Um, yeah, and that one felt at times like I was watching a found footage film because it, it, how could it be real? Do you know what I mean? And that's almost a case of life imitating art in that that one. Do you know what I mean? Like, well, it almost goes to the tr- tr- how popular true crime is now. Like I, I host also a true crime pod- podcast, a high high strangeness podcast. But um, th- looking into that, doing that podcast, um, it, what I found out, um, not from our stats, but just is generally over overall picture, women, um levitate to true crime more than men like podcasts and stuff like that and i think with the advent of netflix and making very well polished produced do- uh, content they are making stuff which you can uh happily watch and binge in an afternoon and be like addicted to it while you're doing the ironing or folding folding the kids clothes and i think all of this has helped with the whole found footage thing because these for these like you watch a movie and it's all made up like that that documentary um la 92 yeah that was brilliant that's brutal as fuck and that's the complete run-up through news reports cctv footage people's camcorders of the la riots and what happened at times brutal halfway through the turning point and it's done so well but then you can go watch a found footage it, um... movie which is done like this put together like the bay that documentary, Gav, felt to me, LA92, felt almost like a Night of the Living Dead style zombie invasion was br- bubbling up. Almost under the scripted or something. The way that people were reacting. It was ridiculously, incredibly, incredible documentary, but also so sad that that was happening. It was incredible. Yeah. Really great. Yeah. And oh, I think people levitate to the found footage genre. Um, I, the Preternatural Facebook page. Um, out of all the pages I've got on Facebook, because you you have to do these things with films, you um, and stuff you make, you know, you just make these like pages, whatever. Preacher Natural, on a daily basis, it's two or three people, two or three people like Preacher Natural. Uh, okay, that's nice. Yeah. That's, I appreciate that. Um, you know, yeah, but it continues going up out of anything else I've done. It is more easily accessible, I guess, or known, or because it's on Amazon Prime, it's in the library, but. Yeah, people love found footage. It's still going strong. You know, we, well, we're still well, getting stuff out uh, now, aren't we? 
well, let's jog our memories then, in that case, of what's come out in the last sort of 10 years. Just to, I won't go through them all because there is, believe it or not, loads. Um, but just starting back at 2010. Yeah, you just, just could do like the notable, like good... notable ones. Yeah, 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 totally. Yeah, cool. So like 2010, like three most notable ones really were probably Paranormal Activity 2, um, mm -hmm. The Last series. Exorcism. Uh, oh, the first, the, the, yeah, because there's two of those. The first last six, that's, yeah. a, that's a pretty decent film. And the one my favourite from that year is Troll Hunter. I thought that was really funny and yeah. really, really good. Just really good, really a good idea it, for fan footage. Really, the effects were pretty cool, in it. So it was, yeah. yeah, it was a, it was a great idea. I've only seen it once actually. I need to watch it again. It's in my collection. Um, well, I'm we're covering it um, because that same director did uh, the autopsy of Jane Doe. So we're going to be covering it at some point. Sweet. So yeah, that was 2010. So 2011, quite a few more films came out. Nothing really too um, too much to talk about apart from Paranormal Activity three. Um, Grave Encounters came out this year, which I'm a big fan of. That's just a great film. Just really, really scary. It, I love the fact that it's everybody knows it when you're watching it. It's Ghost Adventures, you know. Yeah. Um, the lead is basically taking that and doing that. I expect they've watched it. Ghost Adventures been like, yeah, you know, like, yeah, fair enough. Um, because that what? stuff is also very popular. Yeah, yeah. Oh god, how many programs are there that were there about people on daytime TV? Two, yeah, just two guys going around haunted or so called hours, haunted. Yeah, hours of it on daytime TV. Like you can see and watch, and that is essentially found footage. Yep. Yeah, totally. And the other one that came out this year, which I kind of liked, was Apollo thirteen. Uh, sorry, Apollo eighteen. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, I, I did see it. I was kind of, I don't know. Harvey Weinstein uh, um, produced that, actually. It's so an interesting it, so one. his name on it, not that that means shit anymore, but his name yeah. on it um, gave it a little bit of pedigree. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> um, but it's like, it's a decent one. And again, what I like about it this subgenre is when it does something different like troll hunter or what about if we got the moon uh, footage and there's that extra stuff to see in it you know that's mm -hmm. why i like that one yeah um moving on then to 2012 we, you you touched on this earlier the bay yeah good film good that's really good uh, and vhs we got our first uh, vhs which is a, an anthology of fine footage shorts so really strange, but really good. Yeah, um, but the, the thing is, that was put to, put together by Brad Miska, um, uh, who is a bit of a name on the internet and stuff in the horror world. And um, he, I, yeah, he got some alright directors to do some segments, and they're kind of pretty decent. Those VHS movies, I'm quite a fan. I've got them in my collection. I've got quite a found footage collection actually. And again, uh, there's, I think there's three of them now, and we're going to be talking about them in, a, in an upcoming episode as well, because I think those Isn't mini there four? episodes... Is Viral, is Viral f the full final? That's is part three. Oh, OK. I think. Yeah, I think they're talking about doing a fourth one. I think they should. Um, I like them. I, like, I even like the viral, viral one. I thought it was all right. And this proving how quick and easy it is to bang out um, these fan footage movies, this year, again, 2012, we also got Paranormal Activity 4, and Grave Encounters 2. So straight away, we've got sequels to ones that were out the year before. Well, that that's it. There's a reason why I've done... I've just, I'm have just i just wrapping up a found footage series. Yeah. Um, Joseph is Missing is on YouTube. Check it out. Um, I'm just wrapping it up, and I've done a film because it's cheap to make because it literally costs next to nothing. It, you have to just be try and be a little bit clever with it or do something interesting that no one else has done or just do it all right um it's really cheap to make so yeah and the fact the paranormal activity like the dude made it for like 15 grand i think in, in his own house sort of changed his house a little bit and it made millions and millions yep it's ridiculous isn't it so, so as soon as the executives cool. as soon as anyone who's in a suit sees that they're jumping all over it and to be fair i don't mind those paramore activity movies you've recently just worked your way through them all yeah and i kind of enjoy them there's quite a few uh this year i'll just quickly mention a few others next couple of ones that i really like chernobyl diaries is one that i'm a big fan of yep you like that one uh yeah yeah it's not bad it's, it's, it's all right it's not bad chronicle which is a superhero fan footage movie. So Max not really Landis. horror, but there are some horror elements in it. That's Max Landis. 
Na- yeah. Naughty, we, naughty Max Landis. Naughty boy, yeah. John Landis. Let's move away from yeah. that then. There's also a horror movie which uses found footage as its plot driver, and that is Sinister with Ethan Hawke. Um, yeah. It's I, not a found footage movie, though. Yeah, you can't, you can't give that. Well, let's go on to 2013 then. So 2013, VHS 2 comes out. So there we go. Um, and which got, is great, um, that, that segment um, by Gareth Evans, Gareth Edwards, Gareth Evans? Gareth Evans, yeah. Um, is so good. Um, Afflicted, the vampire bang footage. So again, that's, we're a trying decent, to... that's a decent film as well. And it, it two, two dudes backpacking in Europe, one of them get, meets a woman and gets bitten by her. And they document his transformation into a vampire over a series of nights. It's, it's a pretty decent movie. On the other end of that scale gap, and I've seen this one, you'll be surprised. Wouldn't be surprised. Is the Frankenstein theory, which is a fan footage where they document sightings of a legendary Frankenstein monster in the snow. I've not seen it. It's not very good. That's why uh, I've not seen it. Willow Creek, another Bigfoot um, fan footage film. Bobcat. That, Bobcat Goldthwait directing. Yeah, it's um, interesting. Yeah, he wanted to just jump into the world of horror. He wanted to do something, and that's what he came up with. And it's it's all right. It's funny though. The 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 main actor is at times but like when he's in a tent and they hear the sound and they look around and he's trying to be quiet. It is a spitting image of a friend of mine. It's really fucking weird. Um, <laughs> apart from that, it's not too bad film. There is like a twenty minute take in a tent, um, but it's worth a watch. Totally. Um, a couple of other ones that came up. One we talked about off air, Devil's Pass, which is also called the Dostoevsky uh, Pass or something like that, isn't it? It's a, yeah. it's a true story, apparently, and really interesting when you look into what happened to the actual guys. Um, yeah. They it's, recreated it, yeah. it, and it yeah. works really well. Yeah, it's a weird um, case. The Sacrament. Is, yeah, the Sacrament's so good. That's um, oh, Eli, Eli Roth produced, and it's directed by old uh, Ty West, isn't it? And it feels, again, like what I love, again, is that we're trying something new. What happens if there is a camera inside a cult? Well, I love the... with The, the, the best thing of this, when it started up, it starts up as voice. It's voice, like the voice team going out yeah. to... And we've all watched voice stuff. I've watched most of the voices epically late at skateboarding series. Um, so they're a legit thing people watch doing this sort of thing so then we go into doing it and it's produced by Eli Roth and directed by Ty West who does slow burn movies um, and it's basically mm-hmm. the Jim Jones massacre and it's done really really well again because it's all film footage and you're right there in the mix yeah. as it's happening um, and it's really good again that's in my, my pretty much every movie apart from that Frank's on one you've said so far is in my collection because they're decent films well, there's one more I'll mention before we move on then, which is Borderlands, which I've never seen, but I know you really like. Mm, Borderlands, eh? <laughs> uh, tell yeah, me Borderlands. about Borderlands. I can't remember Borderlands. Oh, of course I can. Uh, I do apologise. The English one with the two... Uh, the the uh, guys going to the church to investigate... Yes. Uh, paranormal activities and they are one of them's of the cloth himself but lost his face That's slightly the fucking brilliant movie so yes uh, I need to check it out you've told me for years to watch it and I just haven't got around to doing it I've so watched that in your house by myself weird <laughs> like uh, I had work the next day and I crashed at your house um, and you were drinking you were at a pub oh okay and you left me there. And I was like, yeah, no worries. So I watched that and then went to sleep. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> well, moving moving on to 2014, we got Wreck 4. So Wreck's been churning out their sequels all the way through till now. Uh, I don't um, think... Is, is 4 the wedding? No, three's the wedding. 4 is like on a cruise ship or a boat or something. You know what? I think I saw 4 then put it out my mind. Is it not very good, maybe? It's not very good, no. I, I liked 3. 3 was fun. Yeah. Yeah, um, a few other ones that came out this year. Um, Paranormal Activity, The Marked Ones, which is a sequel, isn't it? It's still part of the series. Uh, yeah, no, it's a, uh, that's a, co- a cool film as well. I think that's, uh, again, taking that idea um, and putting a different setting and different actors in it. But then we do get right at the end, we do get a wrap around to the first film. And it was like, that's um, a good one kind of end out on. But I think there's a new one coming out next year. 
I need to go back and watch them because they all kind of blurred into one in my head. Um, so it might be a good idea for me to binge them over a series of nights. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, you should. As Above and So Below, that's another good one. That's a really um, good movie, set in the Paris Catacombs, and again, a well-produced, well-made film. I love the fact that there's a piano under oh, the streets Jesus. of Paris, and then he goes to check the notes. Oh, the, the key never worked when I was younger. Da, 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 bong. And it's like, it's the same <laughs> key, the same piano. It's like, what the fuck? That's so good. Um, another one which I, I kind of liked, I know it's a bit whack, is The Pyramid. Have you seen that? Uh, with a dude from um, the Inbetweeners. Yeah, uh, I saw it. I don't remember, but I think I remember being a bit shit and going, "What a waste of opportunity." The ending was a bit shit. I don't remember much. Um, but there was a couple of other good ones. Three more that came out this year. Before we move on to the next year, the the taking of Deborah Logan um, that came out this year that really freaked me out. Really good f- film. It's it's proper freak out material. The the one scene we won't spoil it. One scene in yeah. the uh, the uh, cave bit. Mm. And Creep came out this year, Gav. Creep, and that's by those dudes who make lots of types of films themselves, very independent filmmakers, can't remember their names. It'd be terrible for me. Um, um. <laughs> and they, um, yeah, just made this movie, and it's a decent film about a... Patrick Bryce is the director. And the main actor, that's the director's main actor, yeah. 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 Um, and it's just, it's a very chilling... A videographer goes out to uh, to just do a real easy paid job and then it just becomes a little bit worse and worse and he's kind of a bit far from anywhere and it has a sense of isolation and just kind of misery style entrapment thing going on. The main guy is incredibly freaky and terrifying as well, isn't he? Yeah, absolutely. He does a really good job of that. The last one for this year, then, before we move on, is our first batch of the sort of movies we were talking about, and that is Unfriended came out this year. Yeah, I like this movie, and I quite like the second one. But I yeah. watched Unfriended at your house when you were asleep. Wait, is, what, what are we doing? Why are we both watching <laughs> movies at each other's houses when we're sleeping? Uh, you'd gone to bed and I just had a coffee. And so I put my laptop on and watched it. And obviously it's a movie that takes place on laptops. So it was a really good way to, for me to watch it with headphones on. But I kind of made myself a bit scared. Yeah, I think I watched <laughs> it on my Mac. And I, at times, I was it, it was a little bit confusing because I'd go to fucking start moving the mouse. Like, oh, for fuck's sake, it's not my keyboard. It's not my computer. Jesus when Skype Christ. rings on these sort of movies, you go to answer your Skype, don't you? Yeah. And you realise, oh no, it's actually... Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, moving on then, <laughs> to 2015. A um, couple of ones really to mention on this one. Um, one that I really like called Project Almanac, which is what happens if you put time travel in the mix of fine footage. I don't know if you've seen that one. No. group of kids, well, a group of young scientists figure out um a way to open a portal briefly and pop back in time and then they realize they start fucking up loads of you know like the but the butterfly effect um and it's really well done and it's all fan footage it's really original i really enjoyed it that's project almanac um really high profile one came at the shake out the visit what year are you at we're in 2015 now Okay, cool. I was going to say, 2014 didn't mention Blair, uh, Blackwater Vampire. Yeah, that wasn't on the list for some reason, but that is a decent one. Tell us about that. Um, kind of, It's basically, Blair is a place, which is a, a creature. So Blackwater's a place and the vampire's a creature. It's a, it's a camera crew going to a little town, doing interviews, and then going out into the woods in the tents, and one of them going missing and stuff. It's basically Blair Witch, but for some reason you don't mind that. Um, because you kind of just get into it. It's kind of all right done. It's doing the same thing as Blair Witch, but it's all right. It's not too bad. The vampire is... There's a one part, you see this vampire, this thing upside down the trees, and it's pretty scary. And then they yeah. do just a bit too much for close-up and a bit too showing it a bit too much. It's like, come on, learn from Jaws here. Um, but pretty decent movie if you see it around. I'd say check it out. Yeah, it's got a good title. Blackwater Vampire does sound like a good thing. And I, I enjoyed it. I only watched it myself over Halloween for the first time. I enjoyed it. Um, another one I watched the first time over Halloween was Jerusalem. Uh, yeah, with I, Z in the once. I don't totally remember it, though. 
yeah, it's pretty decent. Uh, it's about like a crazy event that's happening, almost like the end of the world. It almost feels a bit like that, that segment within one of the VHS movies where everything kind of goes tits up at the end and the demons start attacking and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, and The Visit, Shyamalan's The Visit came out this year as well. Yeah, because obviously he hadn't, he hadn't done anything for a while because he's kind of gone a little bit downhill with his uh, twists. And, um, and then... Yeah, this was his, and this was a cinema release. I watched this in yeah. the cinema, which is quite nice to watch. I saw Blair Witch in the cinema. Uh, I saw the new Blair Witch in the cinema. Uh, um, so yeah, it's nice to watch these movies in the cinema. At times, a little bit full on, um, but most of the time, all right. The visit was good. It was funny as well. Of course, um, of course. Got a little twist to it. Some people will see it easily. I kind of didn't because I was just going along with it, and I was like, oh, nice. Yeah, same here. We had another, um, we had the Ghost Dimension, Paranormal Activity, came out this year as well. So another entry. Yep. Uh, and um, obviously Hell House LLC, and also The Gallows, which was really disappointing, personally. I didn't like that very much. Oh, uh, shit. Yeah, uh, a lot of people feel that way. And it, it's a shame, because it could have been really good. Moving in then very quickly into 2016, uh, we got um, Found Footage. 3D, which you've talked about. Oh uh, yeah, cool. I thought it was 2017. Yeah, uh, yeah, not that is. But again, they're trying to do something different, and um, uh, this was actually shot with 3D cameras, so you could watch that um, if you have a 3D TV and all that jazz. Um, uh, the 2D version is is all right. It's it's okay. It's it's okay. It could have been been better, to be honest. It's okay. And not that. There's not anyone really massively likable in the film as characters. I think. I think it's something like that. It's a kind of. Like, it was all right. It just. It was okay. Have you seen? Yeah, it? The, the title bores me. So it's kind of like. Uh, but yeah. I will watch it at some point. Oh, so you haven't seen it? Okay. Oh, well, yeah. So go at it and just go. Okay, cool. Let's check it out. And it's it's them just saying, look, we've found footage movies, and they're just telling you what everybody knows. So they're saying we've got to do something different. This is what we've done. I've got us 3D cameras. We're going to shoot in 3D. Oh, okay, cool. Then they all go out somewhere to make a movie and stuff. You know. Okay, cool. Yeah. Well, the only other notable one from 2016 you touched on earlier, which was the Blair Witch remake slash sequel slash reboot. Mm, originally, uh, it was this movie being done called The Woods. Yeah, and, and then we were they were all just very surprised, it, didn't they? And it was basically the same sort of thing. It's just doing that whole trick thing, and it's all of a sudden just going boom, it's Blair Witch to the point where people went into the uh, cinema with these posters saying the woods, and when they sat down outside, they pulled all the posters, changed them to Blair Witch. So when they came out again, they're like, "Oh my god, there's a poster! What the hell?" Because they didn't know they're going to watch the movie, which is pretty cool. So cool. Yeah, it's cool. I must admit, I enjoyed it. I went to the cinema to watch it, and I did enjoy it, but. Um, uh, second time around, I lost something for me, um, but it's still an enjoyable film. Yeah, and do you know what though? I wanted to watch the movie called The Woods. I was like, I really want to watch that movie. I think that, 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 you know, it's easy, easy, silly name, really, if anything. But I want to see it, and I didn't use it. So uh, the, I wrote a script earlier this year, which you know anyway, <laughs> called The Woods, and that's kind of I just went, yeah, I like that. So, um, yeah, Blair, secretly, Blair Witch. It's Blair Witch Four. <laughs> yes, it's secretly it's Blair Witch Four. Um, but yeah, that Blair Witch movie, it was all right. They were they were kind of doing it again, but the trouble is with this, it was not trouble at all. This time round, they had to do something different. And the first movie, you know our thoughts on that. Go back and listen to it if if not the review. Um, we love it. Um, this time round, though, it was showing the gore, um, which is fine. A lot of stuff in there was really craftily. And really sneakily done and they had a drone in it so which is kind of nice oh we're lost send the drone up see where it's and it's all just woodland for as far as they go stuff like that was kind of cool but they yeah they did show the witch didn't they a couple of times as well yeah so that, it was it was too much show that's the problem yeah. with this one moving into 2017 there's only one really worth mentioning which is Creep 2 uh which, again, I really loved and probably worth covering this series for an episode I'd be happy to do the really weird set of films um we could do really good i think th th there is a third one isn't there is there no. i don't think i've seen it uh, i think the i think there was a rumors of a third one being talked about yeah well moving into 2018 um dark unfriended dark web which i know you're a big fan of 
Uh, yeah, I, I, I quite like the series. I've only seen it once, but I kind of enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed the first one. So, yeah. And there's not anything else really. There's a movie called Antrim, which a few people have talked about online. I've not seen. Yeah, I've, I've not heard seen mixed it. reviews of it. No, I've not seen it. Um, no, I haven't seen it. Devil's Doorway. When did that come out? Was that this year? Uh, that is actually this year, 2018, that we're looking at. Hmm. And un- annoyingly, I've got a copy, and at the weekend I tried to watch it, and I just didn't get a chance. So I still haven't seen it. We got Hell House LLC 2, the Aberdeen Hotel, came out in 2018 as well. I can't so totally they... remember it, but I remember enjoying it. And then moving into 2019, because there's not much in 2020 really to talk about. But 2019, the only movie really was um, Hell House LLC 3, mm. Lake of Fire. Yes, which I saw, and I do remember, and I uh, started off promising, and I think it went a little bit silly towards right at the end. And I've not seen either of the sequels to that film. So that is a really good catch-up and a, a reminder of just how strong this subgenre is still going. Um, mm. And I think that's just because we are all obsessed with our screens and our phones, and it fits nicely into that realm of that, really, doesn't it? It does indeed. And and do, listeners do apologise if Dam does break up a little bit at times. It just happens to be one of those things. Um, yes, do you want to get into this? Yeah, well, let's take a break and come back and get into some Bigfoot action for Exists. Nice. We'll be back soon. That's my Bigfoot impression. Brilliant. Brian? Yeah. When was the last time you felt the tender touch of a woman? Uh, Brian just needs to be touched by another human being. Oh, me and Brian said sex life alone. Me and Brian alone! <laughs> you ladies gonna get down next? Whoa! Oh, I don't we think got, we, got, we, got, we are officially in un-GPS territory, look. Uh, rolling deep in the woods. Bro, your uncle has a cabin out here? <laughs> yeah, dude. Is that it? Yeah. Seriously? Trust me, guys, it looks a lot better in the daylight. You gotta be kidding me, man. Ew. I went out and I bought one of these bad boys. We're gonna have the best YouTube video ever. Looks like a little love walk going on. I shouldn't be shooting this. What the hell was that? There's something over there! And he ran across that ridge right there. Hello? Let's go back. <gasps> I think we did something to him. So no one knows we're here? No. What are you doing? I got some GoPros set up. If anything moves up in here, Brian Tober's gonna catch it. <laughs> What is that? Oh my God. Get the lights! Get the lights! Get the lights! There's no credible documented cases of a Sasquatch attack. Shut up about a Sasquatch. It's okay. There's nothing out here. I'll go bomb! I'm, I'm it's red! Gonna... We're at the cabin! So here's our first review for our visit back to find footage. So this is 2014's Exists. A group of friends who who venture into the remote Texas woods for a party weekend find themselves stalked by Bigfoot. Bigfoot indeed. There we go. Not Littlefoot. Not Mediumfoot. Not Littlefoot. (laughs) Bigfoot. Uh, Good idea for a find footage film because... You know, Bigfoot has been famously captured on footage, we think, <laughs> in the past. Yeah. Um, so this 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 would work. You know, people going, but actually, these guys don't go looking for Bigfoot. Bigfoot hunts them, doesn't he? In this one. Yeah. Uh, well, the funny thing is, this movie is a revenge movie. I thought about this movie. What if Liam Neeson played the Bigfoot? <laughs> I can't imagine. They, 
I can't imagine them employing Liam Neeson to have a silent role, really. Unless at the very no, end, he does he talk. Says, like, yeah, I've got spine. I've got some special skills. I can throw rocks at you. From the, the reason I've been hunting you down. The reason I've been hunting you down is because I throw rocks at you, and I don't like you having sex in my woods, and I don't like you smoking marijuana in my woods. That'd be brilliant, wouldn't it? I, th- I think it should be Liam Neeson playing this because this movie is essentially a revenge movie. Uh, we may as well get into yeah, so spoiler territory. Is this, is this like a Taken movie? Is this? Is that what you're yeah, saying? this is Taken, but with Bigfoot. <laughs> Mistaken. <laughs> Mistaken part five. <laughs> Bigfoot's coming home. I like the sound of that. No, you're right, it is a revenge movie. It's directed by... Who's it directed by, Gav? Eduardo Sanchez, of uh, one of the two what, directors what from it? the classic Blair Witch movie, the original Blair Witch Project. Yeah. He uh, also produced Book of Shadows, Blair Witch 2, and directed a short on VHS 2. So he's always dipped it, keeping his toes dipped in the horror genre. Um, so it's good to see him back for this. And there's nobody really famous in this, is there? There's no famous actors in it. Um, no, the cast... There's only really five. Um, I'm not... I don't know, did they, did they just choose a cast which no one's going to like? Was, was that the idea? Because I actually thought that was the idea, m- making this group so unlike... I don't know any of their names. Fuck knows. Uh, I think one of them's Matt. Yeah. I think that's all I know. Um, They're not a very likeable bunch, and that is but, one of your probable big faults with the film isn't it yeah is 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 that on purpose because you want to feel more emotion for bigfoot spoiler bigfoot's missus no kid little foot gets not gets run over <laughs> gets run over uh by uh, a group of horny kids essentially and that's the that's the film that's the film, and he seeks his revenge. Uh, imagine if that was the IMDb. On IMDb. <laughs> Just completely it spoils it. Bigfoot's, Bigfoot's son, Littlefoot, is killed by when run over by a group of horny kids. Yeah, yeah. Bigfoot seeks there revenge. What, uh, what if they did that in a well, sport a every movie <laughs> with IMDb? Well, that'd be rubbish, wouldn't it? It'd be shit. Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet are on a boat that sinks. They, he dies. She gets away. Yeah. yeah. She won't let him on the door. Um, <laughs> yeah, no one's very likable in this. There's five people that go into the woods. Um, it, it's just cabin in the woods. It's your evil dead. Five kids who've clearly never seen a horror movie in their entire life decide, let's go to the woods to a cabin that one of my uncles owns uncle bob uh and we're gonna go and have a party there does that ever work out in any film ever no never and of course course the classic line is there's no reception and they didn't tell their uncle and they stole the keys yeah so it's revealed once things start going badly that actually they stole the keys and they didn't tell uncle bob that they're there so they're stuck with no cell phone reception. Nobody knows they're there. And they're being stalked each night and sometimes in the day by something in the woods, which they find out is the legend Bigfoot himself, played by the same actor who played Bigfoot in Bigfoot or Harry in the Henderson Scav. Did you know that? Uh, I, I only knew it from checking out the trivia on IMDb. Um, but yes, and I thought that was brilliant. And I quite like the look of Bigfoot in this, when you do get to see him. Uh, it's quite scary towards the end. Uh, yeah, it's a really, really good big, Bigfoot. Um, when you actually do get to see the dude, like, there's that, there's that one shot of him jumping down to the bus, which is falling off the uh, cliff, um, pushed off the cliff. Yeah. We'll get, we get to that. Um, but that shot of him comes down, boom, and like, whoa! It's, there's a couple of sequences and in I, this I really movie. Like the shot. Yeah, there's a couple of sequences in this movie which are really good. I, I like the shot that, where they hold a close-up of his eyes just for uh, towards the end of the film, but which we'll come on to later. Mm. Um, but yeah, it, it's great. So um, I really like this film. You you thought you really liked this film. You've kind of you've said some of the cast have put you off this film a little bit. But let's run through it. 
let's see if I can reignite your fires for this film a bit. I don't think so. Because there are some great moments in it. That, well, there's some, I already said <laughs> well, there's there some are good, some great moments in it. There's some good set pieces, definitely. But that doesn't hold a whole movie to be, you know, brilliant. So. What's clever about this film is they do stuff that you haven't seen in found footage before at this point, anyway, when this film came out. Stuff like um, they use time-lapse footage. Uh, mm. so which is cool to transition from day to night so that we know that, okay we're, we're on the next day now that's fine we get lots of GoPros in this as well GoPros weren't really used very much in fan footage films so um, essentially they're, 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 cool. they're saying this film was like uh, at the beginning there's some text in there are they saying like this film has been compiled from footage we've put together and this is the documentary type of thing is that what they're essentially saying uh, I didn't see that bit. I know that they said um, the very first text says there's over 3,000 Bigfoot sightings um, since 1967. But they don't talk about the, uh, the, um, the, the, the where the footage came from, et cetera. Et cetera. It's, it's one of those things. If you're, if you're going back to the world of Bigfoot, people could be like, oh, my God, one of the, the grandfathers or the fathers of found footage who directed one half of the directing team of Blair Witch Project is going back to that genre, uh, that subgenre. It, I was, I was like, oh shit, okay, man, fucking hell, big guns, you know. It, or it is quite going to be quite a thing. Like everyone knows, you know, I've got to do something pretty good, and it is pretty good. But it's broken with like there's a little bit of music, music score in this and stuff like that. So I'm wondering, they're not saying this is found footage then, but at no point. Then again, they've got credit on the front. You wouldn't find the tapes in the wood or the. DV file, DVD file, or whatever camera it is, or HD file with with text already laid in. So I guess they are doing that. I was just trying to want to work out the authenticity of the uh, found footage within the realms and rules of well, found uh, footage. Yeah, I think the rules are there's there's two types when you're talking about that. There's the type where it's like, hey, we found these tapes in a bag in the woods, or you know, a terrible incident happened, and this is yeah, what one's we've documentary, one's raw, TV. yeah. And then this one is just kind of like, this is a story, but it's just told in the style of a found footage. It doesn't matter that, that they're edited together nicely. And the, the only thing I don't agree with is the, the putting, like you mentioned, putting score over some of the... And there's some audio from other clips. I don't like clips. hearing this score. Yeah, some audio of other clips yeah. over the top of other clips. And then coming back to those ones. So yeah. it's obviously been edited. So I was just, you know, they don't even mention it really. But I, in a way, I feel like they should have been like... We know what we're doing. We made the Blair Witch Project because I've, I've unfortunately everybody's going to be thinking that. And this is some ways they should know what they're doing. Like they they made they put some fucking ground rules there. They have made a base level. It's like there you go. This is this is the level. This is what you do. This is what you don't do. Um, so I don't know. I, I wish I'd almost sort of said this is a documentary. These tapes have been compiled for whatever reason, or you go into it proper raw. So. That's my thing. It kept pulling me out of this while watching it. And the other thing, and the story just doesn't feel like a very great story. They're going to the woods and the whole case. I've seen all this a load of times. Like, could you have not done more of a drama with the characters which were more likable? Or if you didn't want to make them likable, make them unlikable, but properly unlikable. Not middle of the road average. Uh, I don't know. Uh, they bugged me. Um, but you know what I'm like. I like to make. Yeah, there's five, there's, well, there's five characters. Um, and the most unlikable is probably the, the guy, Matt, who's got the cameras and stuff like that. Um, the others are kind of, like you said, they're a bit middle of the road, really. They're not really that memorable. Um, I quite like Uncle Bob when he shows up later on, but um, yeah. he doesn't stick around for long. <laughs> but, well, let's get into the story. <laughs> let's get into the story then. So, basically, we've got five buddies. They're on a road trip, two couples and an odd one out. And the odd one out is definitely a bit of an odd one out. He's a bit of a pervert. He's the guy with all the cameras. Um, he is a bit of a pervert, isn't he? He loves smoking the weed. Yeah, yeah, he loves smoking weed and perving on the girls. And it's funny <laughs> though, because when he smokes weed, he does really crazy, wacky stuff, which I didn't didn't know would be associated with uh, such a drug. It's just like, yeah, what? Yeah, it's just like he, he always just really he egotistical, crack, or maybe? yeah, he could be lacing it with crack, I guess. <laughs> We've all been there, Gav. We've all been there. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we get something that we've seen quite a lot so they're driving along you get that kind of almost like evil dead one everyone's in the car singing and chatting people falling asleep playing pranks on each other and as they're driving along in the middle of the night we realize that they're driving towards this cabin uncle bob's cabin and then suddenly they sort of clip an animal with a car um 
oh my, what was that was that a deer i don't know what it was they get out they check there's a bit of blood on the, the bumper we've seen this done a billion times we do however hear a really strange animal cry coming from the woods don't we um yeah and it really reminds me of that real life bit of found footage that we've all heard that we covered once for world of the strange but that creature screaming in the woods remember that mm. um yeah, yeah, that's brilliant. That that creature sound. This it's is a really eerie like, cry. It's, it's a really like, good. It's very much like Get Out and there's so many other movies where it starts with driving along. Oh, we hit something. Let's go look at it. Cabin Fever, I think, does the same as well. Yeah, lo- like I said, it's, it's happened loads, and and quite often as well. You know, oh, we hit something. Oh, we see something on the side of the road. What was it? Was it a monster? Was it a werewolf? Well, they check the footage and they look it, and it looks like. It was big, bigger than it would dare. They can't quite see what it was that they hit. So they're, they're a little bit freaked out, but it's fine. They get to the cabin. Uh, they have to walk to the cabin because they can't drive the car up because the roads all blocked up with logs. So they, they get to the cabin and the door's open and they go inside the cabin and it is really run down and shit in there, isn't it, Gav? It's, uh, yeah, it's there's rotten shit. food, there's leaves everywhere. Um, he jumps on the bed and like all these like bits of leaves fly up in the air and then they hear a noise coming from the other room and straight away you're thinking wow are we going straight into some bigfoot action but no it is just a big fat wild pig running around in the cabin she just kept in there become buddies with it squeal piggy squeal no i'm not saying about having sex with a pig dan that's you thinking that i'm saying generally just have be a buddy with the pig no sex at all you just want to be friends with the pig yeah not not friends with benefits with this pig? No, no. No props. No. F- <laughs> <laughs> so um, they decide it's a bit weird in this cabin. Uh, we'll tidy it up tomorrow. Let's go and sleep in the car. So they all pile back into the car and they sleep in the car. And at night they hear more howling and strange noises coming from the woods. And they're kind of freaked out. They don't know what it is. They don't understand what it could be. Hey, um, uh, one of them does say... Sorry. Apologies, apologies. Uh, 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 has there been? There hasn't been at any point a um, reason why they're filming as such. What What's Matt's reasoning? What's he doing? He's just got a whole bunch of new camera equipment. He says at one point, and he's really excited to play around with it all. That's literally his thing. He said he just wanted to document all the fun they're going to be having because they do like ride some BMXs into the lake and they do loads of like extreme I think there should be more of a backstory for I reckon Matt is a kid who's uh, got a uh, inheritance and doesn't have to work and never works um, and he's just got loads of money to buy stuff like this because like who on earth is going to bring all those cameras out why would you bring all those cameras out that just seems ridiculous like, like so many GoPros it's like why would you do that you don't need that many like two well he gives them like most of them have a GoPro each plus he sets up about four time lapse cameras uh, around the, the cabin plus this, makes, this definitely makes me a think he GoPros doesn't on the porch this makes me think he definitely doesn't have a job and he lives on an inheritance because this is going to be hours and hours and hours and hours of editing like so much for so everyone's this basically, you've given him his backstory then yeah, has to be. There we go. He's basically Johnny Knoxville. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why John, <laughs> I don't know why Johnny Knoxville, but yeah. Because he had loads of money, and that's how he got into doing his uh, his jackass shit. Well, um, he was a writer, he was a spying writer, Johnny Knoxville, and um, he nothing was kick bringing it up for him he didn't know what to do so he messaged a load of um went to a load of different agencies and writing places and said look i'm going to do this thing on self-defense um an article on it but i'm actually going to film it as well i think that was the thing or later on when jeff tremaine from big brother came over and said why don't you film it as well that's where it all started but i didn't know anything about johnny knoxville money but this is this is us digressing completely off the topic (laughs) <laughs> well, I like, I like a tangent well let's go back to this movie so yes they hear these noises in the night in the car and one of them says do you think this is what your uncle Bob um, the legend that he talked about and the other one says shush 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 and then they go back to sleep so we get a little teaser there of what could it be um, in the morning they check out the, the car what, what, and what? yes there's hair and blood 
Why were they sleeping in the car? What? Because they're too scared to sleep because in the house. The, because the cabin was an absolute shit pit and they needed to tidy it up and clean it up a bit. So yeah, actually, they wanted to, be to make, fair, make it nice. To be fair, you probably could easily get bitten by shit or stuff like that in a place like that. Yeah, so they, they, they sort it out so they can start sleeping there the following evening. So in the morning, like you said, he's getting all of his cameras out and they go down to the lake and they start diving in the lake on their BMX bikes and mountain bikes and yeah, doing so all these cool, BMX crazy... jump montage. Yeah, extreme. Yes. It's, it's, it's extreme. It's pretty cliche and kind of like, meh, to be honest. Oh, sorry, I feel like I'm being really down on this film. That's all right, Gav. I, I will always be up on this film because I really like this film, so it's all good. good. Um, one of the characters then um, decides that he's going to film Todd and his girlfriend because they go off in the woods. Yeah, this sex. is Matt. Matt. Matt the perv. Yeah, he's being a pervert and he decides, oh, yeah, great, I'm going to film these guys. So he starts filming them um, and then they suddenly see him and they're like, hey, what are you doing? Um, well, no, that's no, no, because no. there's a big foot. They don't see him. Um, he sees something and he's like, Whoa, guys, be careful. Look over there behind you. And they're like, What are you doing? Are you filming us? And by that point, the creature or whatever it is I, has gone. But because they're, they're pissed off. How do you explain what you're doing there with a the camera? Well, they know what he's doing there. He's going <laughs> to he's, he's filming that so he can sit in his editing room with his Kleenex. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, so they're very angry with him because as far as they know, he's just filming them, getting up to all sorts. They don't believe him, of course. He decides um, So he goes side. off to have a smoke. Yeah, yeah, totally. So he goes off and he has a smoke and he starts telling the camera uh, all about his uncle. Um, and he goes at what his uncle saw all those years ago and why his uncle doesn't really come back to the cabin anymore. So he, while he's out there on his own, he's going, hey, man, Bigfoot. Hey, dude, are you out there? And he's like, I'm Harry, too. We could be friends. Chicks like Harry, guys. <laughs> yeah, this guy's... And guy he's is, all these I, things out there. Because, you know, he's only smoking weed. Well, we don't know that. But I think he's definitely got some issues. Or he had an accident and he got a big payout. <laughs> oh, he was doing a BMX stunt and it went wrong. So he's um, that's yeah. how he's got all his money for his GoPros. <laughs> Well, while he's out there saying all that to the woods, he finds a giant footprint on the ground. And he thinks, oh, look at the size of this. He films that. Then he hears um, a noise uh, through the trees. And you can just about make something out, not really anything that you can really properly see. And he asks, he says, hello, hello. And then suddenly, whatever that thing is behind the tree really growls at him. And he's like, OK, I'm going to gonna back up now. I'm going to back up. And he kind of what goes off then. Not entirely freaked out in any way by the fact something just growled at him. And in fact... That... Yeah. <laughs> go on. No, you go. I was going to say, in fact, that evening, he decides he'll sleep out on the porch to try and get more footage of whatever this creature is, this bear or whatever it could be, because he's... Such a cool dude. Oh, yeah. So that's up, what he's going to do. Yeah, send out more cameras and stuff. But, like, this is another part of this movie. It bugged me. At this point, I was like, there's no story. I haven't got a story. I've got nothing to... Uh, I haven't got a, a rope to guide me through the snow. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> there's no carrot dangling for you at this point, is there? Nothing. Uh, I'm just f watching people I don't really like. So why am I watching it? Um, the only thing that's putting me in yeah. now is like there's a bit of a Bigfoot thing going on here but it's like why is it not like a little story it's not that hard I think if they'd have made this guy a bit more likeable this Matt guy that would have been definitely a better thing really yeah um, yeah a bit more because he's not very likeable in fact no in fact now he's on the porch at night it's middle of the night it's like 1am and the other guys are fighting upstairs yeah. in the cabin He's shouting out, screaming out in the middle of the night, hello, Mr. Sasquatch, woo wee like that. Um, he runs off into the woods and he starts screaming, like, is anyone there, woo? And his buddies all jump out on him with paintballs and they shoot the shit out of him, don't they? Yeah. Um, and that's that's what he gets for being a dick, I guess. <laughs> um, I guess. However, all this, all this noise that they've made, 
they then start hearing more of this howling from the woods and they freak out and they all get inside the cabin as fast as they can um they turn off the lights everyone in there is really scared you know stay calm stay calm we do see some cctv footage that of his cameras outside and you can just make out a shape going past the porch towards the front door of the cabin um and there's some noises coming from the door and it tries to get in the door doesn't it this is quite a tense scene i think because it's quite dark yeah it's well done I think it's well done. Um, um, have, have we have we missed? Sorry, but have we not missed the dude bike decides to bike out? Because the next day they find the cars. Totaled. No, that. Yeah, that that's much later on. Oh, okay. We're only on the bit of the first night. Okay. You, or the you, second night. Um, you carry so, on, sir. So this is the bit where. Um, they think it's all quiet, you know, they think that whatever that creature was out there is gone, and then one of them turns the light on at the window, and you see the face of it roaring into the window at them. Do you remember? Uh, yeah. And it runs off. They hear lots of noise and commotion outside, which, as you just said, in the morning, they find out is the car. Uh-huh. I'm back on track and now. the car. Yes, so the car has been completely trashed, like to the point that, no human could have done this. No animal could have done this. Maybe something in between. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they're like, what the fuck are we going to do here? Um, do we go back to the cabin? Um, well, no one knows we're here. This is where it's all revealed that Uncle Bob doesn't know they're there because they stole the key. And they all start arguing. And this is where one of our heroes decides to cycle for help with his GoPro attached. Yeah, this is uh, one of the like free sequences in this, which I, I, makes the movie higher up the level uh, of films, and and is is fairly well done. Um, uh, um, yeah, the sequence. Go for it. Tell tell what's going on. Yeah. So while the others are barricading the doors uh, in the cabin, our hero decides he's going to go cycling to try and get some reception up high so they can call for help so it goes off and you obviously just got these shots of from his point of view with the book with the gopro and he he gets quite far away and he pulls his mobile phone out um and he gets some reception so he gets off his bike and he starts ringing and he just someone just about picks up i think it's uncle bob he's called at this point and he sort of says hello hello uncle bob and then it cuts out and he tries again and just as he turns around you just see something on the path stood behind him and it's very subtle, just a quick glimpse, but we know what it is. He knows what it is. And he thinks, oh, for fuck's sake, that's Bigfoot stood right there, isn't it? Yeah. So it's, it's, they do, it's, it's, it's not badly done here because he's riding down, riding down. So you're with him for a little bit. Then he stops, he gets off his bike, he goes back along the path slightly. He, he, and he's trying to get signal and he gets signal with that old cliche. And, now, oh, oh, and he finally gets through. And as soon as he gets through, because he's trying to get through it before it went up, and as soon as he gets through and someone actually can hear, and he's like, oh, brilliant. He's got the chance to talk. He looks up and, oh, shit there's this thing here so he jumps on his bike and it's like oh my god oh my god while he's still trying to tell his uncle like we're in the cabin we're in the cabin ah, ah. it's that bit there is just like whoa that's quite full on have you seen the um footage of the bmx in the woods where the bear all of a sudden comes in adjacent to him he's running along to him and just runs 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 and he's just like whoa shit and he has to really pedal a lot faster it's a big brown bear and it almost get, gets no gets shit, i haven't seen that yeah that's pretty intense man and then it, ch- it, it chases after him so he has to just keep cycling and cycling and cycling. And it's just like, oh, my God, don't fall off your bike, you know? Well, that's what happens here, really. Um, as he looks to his side, you can see this this creature, this Bigfoot, is sprinting. And obviously, it's quite big, so it can run really fast. And it's keeping up with him. And it's it's making these horrendous noises, isn't it? Yeah. It's like, rrr, rrr, rrr. it's really trying to catch him. And he is... His breathing is so quick. He's cycling as quickly as he can. What's funny about this scene, Gav, and I'm sure you've come across this, is if you type in Bigfoot captured on camera and things like that, this scene people have put on YouTube and tried to say it was them out in the woods on their bike and they captured footage. And you think, no, no, I've seen the fucking film. I know that that isn't you, you twat. (laughs) But you know people are going to believe. Yeah, some people do. Some people do. You read the comments and some people do. But yeah, he eventually falls off his bike tumbles down a little bit wake comes around and he's got a big broken leg 
and uh, he thinks, oh shit, what do I do? What do I do? The camera falls to the floor and we see a big hairy foot stand next to the camera. Um, and that's kind of all we see of him for that for now. Mm. Now, while we're back in the cabin, the other guys have discovered that there's a trap door in the cabin with an underground basement with a gun in it. So they've got a weapon. Um, well, before that, they have the mountain bike thrown at them, don't they? Oh, no. Well, that's, that's this bit now. So. Yes, okay, because they found yeah, the weapon. So we they're cut... still calm. Yeah. Yeah, and then like, I wonder when, where Matt is. Is he going to be back soon? And then they hear some howling, and they think, oh, shit, it's daytime and it's howling. And then a massive crash, and, the, yeah, Matt's bike comes flying into the cabin. So they instantly start blocking the doors properly. And there's a really good use of time lapse here to show that, obviously, it's heading into nighttime. And, obviously, at nighttime, that's Bigfoot's time because he can probably see in the dark. Yeah. And uh, there's loads of crashing and bashing outside, and Bigfoot shuts off the generator. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> he starts breaking him through the window, so um, Todd manages to get a shot off. He, he fires a couple of shots, actually, um, and it, sort of, it seems to wound quite it. quite hard to watch this. It's very cut very quickly with a lot of dark shots. I know it is night time, but it was quite hard to keep up with what was going on. Yeah, I suppose. Um, it's quite quick, though, so it's not like it's going to grate on you too much, I, I, I guess. One of the girls is grabbed uh, and thrown across the room. They manage to get everybody into the cellar, but one of the girls is really badly injured. We do get some glimpses of Bigfoot, and they hide down in the cellar um, for quite a while. And it's that cliche of something's above the trapdoor creaking, bits of dust coming down. It, is, it was very, uh, but then, uh, very Night of the Living Dead. Yeah, uh, and even reminded me a bit of Inglourious Bastards, actually. Okay. Beginning scene. Bigfoot starts smashing through the um, the trap door, though. Um, they do manage to shoot it again. Um, and we're not sure if one of the girls is dead or not. She looks pretty damn unwell. So they all hide down there all night long, pointing the gun at the trap door, hoping that it doesn't come back. It seems to have gone away. And morning comes, and they get the guts to sort of climb up into the cabin, back up at the trap door. And they can see it's completely trashed in there. Um, they see there's some blood, and uh, like bloody handprints. So they think, right, we've killed it. We've managed to shoot it, or at least quite badly wounded it. So what should we do? We're going to have to make a run for it. But they go outside. So they and they that... leave a note for Matt. Yeah, but then they walk around the corner and they find his bloody helmet. Uh, it's a bit later on, but yeah, they do find it in the in the field I later you, on. I thought you'd laugh about that. Oh God, I've just got it. I've just understood what you said. Yeah, with a real delayed <laughs> action as well, and then all the wind picked up then as well. It got really windy in here. Strange, strange, spooky. Oh. So they leave a note for Matt. Uh, to say, you know, we've gone to get help if you do manage to come back. Even though his bike's been thrown at the cabin by a Bigfoot, he's probably not in a very good position. He's probably um, not. As we a... find out later on, in yeah, fact. Yeah, and Bigfoot's probably not in a good mood. Probably not. They should They should um, think of what they can do this... to make Bigfoot happy. Is it take one for the team? Is it rub one out? What, what, what needs to be done to make him happy? Buy him dinner? I think at this point, I would probably do some interpretive dancing. Um, I would cook him some food. He might just want his um, eyebrows cut. I'd, pr- I'd do that for him as well. You know, I think I'd give him a shoulder massage. But I tell you, when was the last time Bigfoot got a good shoulder massage? He probably wants to be wanked off. I'm not doing that, though. I'm, I'm not, not doing I'm that. I'm not doing that either. We have to get someone else to. We have to get a guest well, on the show. <laughs> if, if I'm doing shoulders, you're going to have to do wank. <sighs> All right. Come on, Gav. You're good at it. I wear gloves. What? <laughs> <laughs> don't know so how you how you'd know this in any way, Dan. To be honest. <laughs> so, 
so this is where um, things get very, very Blair Witch because one of the girls is indeed dead, so they have to leave her body in the, in the cabin. So the three head off into the woods, and one of them says, let's take the trail. And the others say, well, no, that's not on the, that's taken a different way, isn't it? And he's like, no, no, I know these woods like the back of my hand, that old cliche. So, of course, they take the trail and they go off the beaten track. And this is where they find Matt's bag and Matt's bloody helmet. <laughs> um, <laughs> and they hear some more uh, hunt howling. Is this where um, Todd, Todd they... loses his shit and just starts shooting his gun into the darkness? Yeah, they hide under a log, and then they, in the middle of the night, he gets really scared and just starts shooting at nothing, <laughs> wasting <laughs> bullets. What are you doing, you twat? Why is he doing it? It's just wasting bullets. I don't know. But this only pisses off Bigfoot then, because then they start getting huge rocks thrown at them. Yeah. Um, which Bigfoot is known to do, isn't he, Gav? Indeed, he is. That is, one of his, that is one of his things, and hitting sticks against wood, or stones against wood. And apparently he's a fucking good shot with rocks from the stories you hear. What he else can, does like, he do all day long? What else does Bigfoot do in the woods? Come on, let's think about the uh, everyday thing for Bigfoot. He gets up in the morning, finds some berries, eats that, goes out as a bit of a wash down at the lake, checks on his kid. Are you all right? What are we going to do today, Dad? Fuck knows. There's nothing to do out here. There, so just go do what? Piss off. Go do your own thing. I'm going to go down there. Then he just goes... Go and get some fish. Yeah, I'm going to go get some fish. I was going to say that. I'm going to get some fish, then I'm going to find your mum, and I'll tell you what, you can watch what I'm going to do to your mum. It'll make you a, a proper Bigfoot man. And that's probably that. Yeah. Then they eat the fish. And then he's like, well, this afternoon, I'm he, probably going to spend four hours practicing my rock throwing. And, and then probably after dinner, it's probably rock throwing for the rest of the night. Just rock throwing. And then it's like, right, bed time. That's how he's sick, it's it? like, really? Like, yeah, that's it. What are we doing tomorrow? Probably the same as today. Oh, all right. Ah, the life of a Bigfoot. So that's what I reckon's going on. It's great. So, yeah, good aim. So that, Brilliant. So that's why he's such a good rock thrower, everybody. Um, Gav's cracked it. Uh, so we get some night vision goggles use now, and the guys manage to find an old camper van. And they start crying, hello, hello. And he's like, well, no, hang on a minute. This is fucking, it's no one here, is it? It's, it's ridiculous there's no one in it it's, it's abandoned so they all get in it and this is a very Blair Witch um, moment here because we hear their friend from miles away going help help just like in Blair Witch hmm. uh, and they're thinking well is that him what do we do so they run out to try and find him and this is where we get the tree upside down which I feel like should have been a really big thing but it isn't really is it what the finding their friend the no finding the tree upside down I don't even notice it <laughs> brilliant I mean it's the front cover of the film Gav it's the it's the, it's the poster um, maybe I'll just <laughs> it's like the main thing I'll have a look at the pictures Bigfoot now Bigfoot's sign is he rips a tree out he rips a tree out at the roots and puts it upside down in the ground to sort of warn you that this is his territory Oh, I'm looking at the cover now. All oh, right, okay, yeah. I didn't. Uh, yeah, I noticed it. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> this is a Bigfoot film. Do you understand that? You know that Bigfoot is in this, yeah. Where are we? <laughs> Fuck it now. So uh, they they run. Oh God, they run off um, to try and find where they hear this screaming coming from. They find the upside down tree. Then they find a tunnel that is some kind of a nest. And it sounds like Matt is calling from in there. So Brian decides to go in to find his brother. And he crawls into the nest using a camera to be able to see what he's doing. Mm -hmm. And when he gets in there, he finds Matt. And Matt says, he smashed my legs. He smashed my legs. So he's, he wants to keep him in his nest. Maybe for food, well, maybe for pleasure. Yeah, I don't a, know. It's his lair, isn't it? Yeah, his nest. Uh, no, he's not. He's going to eat him later. Pleasure. Do you reckon it's pleasure? Okay. Bigfoot might be a veggie. What, what, so he's could just, be a vegetarian. He actually wants company. So you'd have to hang out with him and go, now we go for a rock. No, no, no. That's not the kind of pleasure I meant, Gav. Oh, now you come touch my cock. Yep. So while he's in there, while he's in there, he 
he shoots what he thinks is a Bigfoot. Maybe it was a baby one. Maybe it was a female one. We don't really know. But he's definitely shot something in there. Hmm. And they manage to crawl out. They catch up with the others. The sun has come up by this point. And they get into the camper van. And this is where it turns into a little bit of an action film now, isn't it? it this is this is um, like a, a, another set piece. This is quite good, this bit here, isn't it? It's really pretty well done. Yeah, yeah. They get in the camper van and they manage to bring Uncle Bob again. Um, this time they manage to tell him where they are. And he says, what the hell are you doing at the cabin? And then the signal cuts out again. Um, and Todd says, look, there's some fireworks here. I'm going to go out. I'm going to fire these fireworks. Uh, trying to attract Uncle Bob. I don't know how they think Uncle Bob's going to get there instantly, unless he's got uh, some Bob's kind of amazing. teleportation device. Bob's your uncle. Uncle Bob? He's great. Now, this is the scariest bit in the film for me, um, and it and it really took me by surprise, and this is where Todd lights a bunch of fireworks. He sets them all off, they all go up in the sky, and then there's this bit of smoke, and then all of a sudden, out of the smoke, Bigfoot just comes charging down the path, straight into the camera, Really took me by surprise. Do you remember yeah. the bit I mean? Yeah, it's, it's, it's really, really quite good, this bit. Made me jump. Um, they all jump into the, the camper van, apart from Todd, who gets sort of tossed into the the, the, the camper van and knocked out on the ground. Um, and this is like a Jurassic Park-style thing now, where um, the camper van is rolled by Bigfoot over the edge of the hill, and you've got that camera that's stationary within it, and everything just starts spinning spinning and bouncing as they roll down the hill. And it looked good. Really you well could, done, you isn't could it? See, yeah, you can see the people rolling. Uh, uh, so however they did it, I guess, um, you know, this is this is it, having a little bit more of a budget for a movie like this, because I, I know it would have still been quite a low budget, but all, all the expertise, say, uh, Eduardo, and that came with it because they had a bit more experience than the average found footage filmmaker possibly but it's almost like they did the whole sort of nightmare on elm street thing the first one with the rotating room which they're using like breakdowns too as yeah. well uh maybe i don't know if they did that in this but you could see it's a, it's really cut real quick though and there's a lot of staticky bits like superimposed on top of the video but it, yeah it looked really good another good thing about that this genre is that you can cover up any flaws or any budget budgetary restraints with a little bit of fuzzy or you know pixelation or something can't you totally good that you can do that in, in fact doing that at the moment <laughs> <laughs> yeah um yeah so it turns out that matt is pretty much dead dora seems to be dying leaving really only brian and this is the, the scene you like now where it's kind of a point of view looking up at of the caravan, the camper van, the door, and Bigfoot just open. jumps down off this cliff. Yeah, lands one yeah. leg either side of the door entrance. Oh, it's like a superhero landing, isn't it? Hmm. Um, and then we get another Blair Witch Project moment for me, where Brian kind of wakes up and he looks to his left, and all the bodies of the victims are laid out, a bit like coffin rock. Well, on just Blair before Witch. this, Bigfoot finds him and he's unconscious. And- and Bigfoot just, you don't see his face, um, but you see him come along and play with him like a, a, a primate. Oh, yeah. And he growls his face and keeps doing it and stuff, getting into it, but he doesn't wake up. And it's very, very like primate like uh, association with what's going on without any more understanding, uh, just to see if you scare them enough. And if they don't flinch, oh, they're dead. Or they're past that problem. So do you think. Do you think that Brian was faking it here and playing dead, or do you think no, he was actually out. knocked out? No, it's passed out, yeah. Because I, I didn't know whether he was faking it or not and just holding it together really well. No, he's passed out. Okay. Well, when he wakes up, because Bigfoot drags him off, he wakes up, and like I said, it's like that scene from Blair Witch with Coffin Rocks. You've got all the bodies of all the other victims lying there, all covered in blood with flies buzzing around them. And he sort of looks at them and he starts crying and he doesn't understand what's going on. Then he looks over and he sees the body of a Bigfoot child, Gavin. Yeah. And then we realise the sad, sad story of the Bigfoot. Which is that they ran over Bigfoot's child earlier on in the movie. And this is why Bigfoot has been pretty fucking pissed off. In fact, that he might they might have even shot his wife when they were in the, the tunnels earlier. Because they definitely shot something. So this, this they've also shot him. Yeah, well, this is where we Brilliant. get, and he wasn't doing anything wrong. And this is where we get, um, the 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 going back to the the cast and the characters. I don't like any of them. 
don't like n- nothing appeals to me about any of these people um in any way um so was that on purpose because really it's about the sadness of bigfoot yeah because he's had his entire family wiped out um he's pretty fucking pissed off about it and you bigfoot, can imagine bigfoot uh, is the best looking bigfoot i think i've seen oh he looks brilliant he looks really really good although i kind of liked that one in that movie that we watched where it rips that guy's jaw off um pry what was it called primeval or something like that or not sure who, um he starts crying um because he's realized that they've killed bigfoot's child yeah. um you know and that's why they're that's why he's after them and then uncle bob shows up thank the lord uncle bob is here um uncle bob says look i've got the truck let's get in the truck quickly but just as they're about to get in the truck out comes bigfoot takes uncle bob out with one swift tackle mm. that's the end of uncle bob as far as uh, we're aware uncle bob has talked about so much this movie the elusive the exciting the brilliant uncle bob he's gonna come save the day he finally gets there it's it's like the shining <laughs> yep he's done he's done and dusted <laughs> so you're saying this is like the shining this movie indeed fantastic well uncle bob is killed um and we get this now the final scene which i really like where brian puts down the gun he says to bigfoot look i'm gonna put the gun down and i'm gonna just back up i'm done i'm done and he turns his back on bigfoot and bigfoot we get this close-up of his face it's really brave um for the filmmakers to show quite a close-up of this face but again the makeup holds up so well and the effects that Mm. It doesn't ruin anything. Like mm. you said, he's a really good-looking Bigfoot. And he just growls at him. And he's, you can see the anger in this Bigfoot's face. But you can also see that he knows that this guy is sorry. He's lost all of his friends and family. And they're even. And the guy starts crying, thinking, well, this is it. I'm about to be killed. And Bigfoot just turns slowly and walks off. And that means that he can walk off as well. Mm. And that's it. He starts crying, and that's the end. It's 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 funny because it goes to show what they're saying is the Bigfoot, even though he doesn't have the intelligence to understand if the person's unconscious or faking it, uh, but he does understand emotional pain and revenge. Yeah, well, Bigfoot's a very um, spiritual creature, isn't it? You know, the Wendigo, the Bigfoot, the Yeti. Mm. It's one of these things people always talk about, you know, Native American tribes and that. They will talk about it's almost like a a Mother Nature spirit, Bigfoot. It's it's almost at one with that spiritual side. Mm. So, yeah, I guess he's in in touch with emotions, like dogs and cats are, you know? They're a bit more in touch with human emotions. He's leaving revenge. He's saying, saying like, you know, this is almost like, go tell your people what fucking happens. It could even be like a warning type (laughs) thing as well. Come fuck with me, you get fucked up. It's it's Liam Neeson, don't it? I warned you not to come into my woods. I warned you to leave my family out of this. This is what happened. You had to mess with me, and now you get what's coming. Exactly. Perfect. And that's him. Get, Irish Bigfoot get, is. Get Liam on the phone now. What? Imagine if at the end of that movie where he fights the wolves, uh, he takes out all the wolves, and then he turns around and Bigfoot's like, You ready for round two? And it's voiced by Liam Neeson as well. That could be the sequel. That's that, that called the Grey. The sequel could be The Brown, and it's a bit like Bigfoot. Yeah, I like the sound of that. Mm. And you just got us, the the poster is just Liam Neeson squaring up to Bigfoot, like Alien vs Predator. But Liam Neeson is also Bigfoot, and they just obviously yeah. edited it together well, like one of those Eddie Murphy movies. But they both talk to each other. Are you ready? Yeah. I'm ready. You know, they got the same voice. They, he's not even yeah, yeah. trying to put on a different. No, the exact same mannerisms and, and sayings, and they're both really Beauty egotistical. Woman. You big hairy bastard, I'm going to take you out. Yeah. Be brilliant. Love to see that film. Um, well, that's Exist 2015. Now, I I still really like this film. It really made me jump a couple of times. I think it's really well done. I've got a soft spot for anything Bigfoot related. Yeah. Gav, you did like this film, but you've taken down a notch or two, haven't you? Your scoring of it. 
yeah, I am um, just um, it just didn't do it for me as much. It, I, I I was looking at more of the story and characters. I don't know why. I know it's only a found footage movie, but at the same time, I was like, yeah, but it's by the it's by it's by the dudes that know how to make a found footage movie. So yeah, I had that issue. To be honest, I I prefer the Lost Coast tapes. It's a real good found footage movie dealing with the Bigfoot myth with a documentary crew going out to visit someone who says that they've got a baby Bigfoot hidden away um that's a better movie than this but this you know that's good yeah going back to this um it's all right it's okay i i you know i might not watch it again i might do i don't know uh i'm not rushing to it but if you've not seen it you gotta watch it so i I am gonna recommend it for the set pieces and the effects and but there's no real story or characters to like Realistically, uh, there are better Bigfoot fan footage movies out there. Willow Creek, Lost Coast Tapes. But this is still fun. Um, it's not very long. It's only an hour and 20 minutes. So I recommend it too. And it's a thumbs up from me and probably a very small Bigfoot it's, thumbs up from Gav on this one. It's kind of a shame because it's, it's essentially like a Cabin in the Woods type film. Um, and it's quite... You know, it's got a bit of a production behind it. The, the fact that they've some of the stuff that's staged and some of the stuff they've done, so there must have been a little bit of money behind it. Um, let's see what the budget is now. But you'd I, like to. So your main thing is you'd like to have seen perhaps some some better characters, some characters you rooted for a bit more. I, w- I wish there'd just been more characters, which are at least a couple of them likable that I cared about them dying, and some sort of story to go along with like Evil Dead remake for example they go to Cabin in the Woods the story is one of them's a junkie and they could try and get him off it it's not hard to put in a, like a story it's fucking easy as shit yeah that would have been that would have been a really and, good uh, take actually if one of them was a junkie actually and that's their reason for going to the woods yeah except Evil Dead did it so but there's ways like that to do that we're going to go out here because yeah. my dad passed away, and it was I want to. I grew up here. There's a lot of things, and like, there's, you know, have more uh, more relationships that I want to invest in. Or am I just too old, and I'm looking into too much, and I should just be going, "Well, oh, that's a found footage movie." Because a fuck. No, I, I agree. I think um, we, because we've seen this basic story so many times, we do need a, a, a different, more in, in, it's wasted uh, original reason for them to get out there. Yeah, I think the story and different characters. Uh, possibly different cast members sorry cast members or them but, playing playing it differently I don't know but like you said Gav redeeming features are there are three or four really good set pieces there's a couple of good scary bits and the Bigfoot looks really good and they don't over show him either they only show him very briefly which is admirable because it's it's a good looking Bigfoot yeah alright well less is more watch it if you haven't seen it if you have seen it and you're inspired from us talking about it and give it another shot you might even like it you might already own this movie but now let's go into your smelly smelly time machine it's not smelly anymore gav i've got loads of um is that those those magic trees up i wondered what they were that's what that's like in that movie seven though isn't it when they're trying to cover up the smell of the dead bodies and stuff shh there's been never been a dead body in this in here get in Right. Oh, bit of a small, bit of a toy squeeze. Oh, let me just. What's, what let me just, what are those oh, new buttons? Let me just get this out of here. What are those new buttons do? Oh, sorry. Uh, can't remember. What do you mean you can't remember? So I don't know. I don't remember putting them in. Must have been drunk when I was working on it. So I can press them. <clears throat> right. You ready? Oh, okay. Yeah, you can press them. Well, in fact, why don't you press them now and we'll see what happens. You ready? I'm pressing it. Oh, nothing's happening. No. Okay, press that one there. All right, here we go. Whoa, that's pretty uh... good. Whoa, what's this machine? This is my time machine. Your man. time machine? Yeah. For the next five minutes, we are going to be the time team. The time team. Whoa. Whoa. What's this? Look at that! 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 that! Look at 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 that! that! was weird that! Look at 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 that! 
what's new. Now, it's 2003. You excited, Gav? What's going on in 2003? What is going on in 2003? Let's have a look. Well, there was um, the last recorded commercial flight of the Concorde this year. No more Concords. No more Concords. Nobody wanted to spend all that money. Okay. Too much money, too much fuel. Uh, so that was it. And Concords, do you know where they're famously from? No, where? Bristol in the UK. Mm, very good. They don't fly anymore, though, do they? They don't anymore. No, that's, that's the end that's of them. So that was, that was the end of Concord. Not at all. Not at all. Um, something else that stopped this year was the final Volkswagen Beetle, the old school style, rolled off of the production line in the final one this year, 2003. Hitler, big fan. Yeah, I love the old school ones. Not Hit- so much the new school ones, but Hit- the old school Hitler ones. Hitler and um, definitely. Hippies. That's the name of my new band. Is that the name of your biography? No, new band. <laughs> Hitler and the Hippies. Hitler and the Hippies. Yeah. Want we're, to see it? We're folk, but uh, one of them, one of our members has a saxophone. It's just weird. I love it. Uh, cool. Well, <laughs> talking of Hitler, um, Saddam Hussein was captured this year as well, 2003. Oh, I do remember this. I Jeez. do remember. Yeah, it was on the news, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was indeed, yes. He was captured uh, by the US forces, and obviously he was eventually executed. Um, that was all a bit strange. Um, politics. California got a new governor. Arnold. The governor of California. What? What the fuck was going on in the world when Arnold Schwarzenegger became the governor of California? I thought it was brilliant. To be honest... Well, do you know what? Well, to be fair, he's a decent... He's a bit of a decent fella. Compared to Trump as president... I'd love Schwarzenegger to be president. But That's I, all I'll I, say. He, I don't live in America, so... I don't really ever... You know... But um, I liked, I loved it when he was the governor because I loved some of his speeches. There was that one speech that he gave as he arrived at the place to give the speech. Someone threw eggs at him, um, and he had a quick. You know, he always loves doing his one-liners. So when he got up on stage, the first thing he said was, "That guy threw eggs at me, but now he owes me bacon." <laughs> it's like, oh, um, is that the first thing he obviously said to his script writers okay I'm going to add something in about that so I sound like I'm still got a sense of humour and I'm addressing the fat eggs I've thrown at me so I'm going to say now that guy owes me bacon and they're like oh please Mr Schwarzenegger don't do that and he's like no 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 I'm going to do it I'm going to do it <laughs> and he just got up on stage and said it well yeah Brilliant. he says that he he said a lot of his um, lines from his movies in some of his speeches, like, I told you I'd be back. And he says all this shit. It's like, for God's sake, Arnie. It's brilliant. But there we go, the governor of, of California. Um, the other thing that happened this year was iTunes was released. Ooh, famous iTunes. Wow. Famous iTunes. Yeah. And the only other thing of merit to mention is that Michael Jackson was charged with some some crimes, some things. Hmm. But then he got but then he got um, let off because they didn't have any evidence. So that was that. That was that. You not even you have a comment to that? Not going to comment. So let's move into what was going on in popular culture. So here's some of the movies that were happening. Okay. Um, oh, one other thing to mention, actually. You know, um, Siegfried and Roy. The line uh, uh, show nor- normally known at places like in Vegas. Yeah, they've got a white tiger. Well, the white tiger attacked Roy, left him paralyzed in 2003 as well. Oh, Roy. So there we go. Roy. Roy. Ah. <sighs> oh. Um, so films that had come out in 2003 here we go Gav so the third in the saga of the Lord of the Rings The Return of the King came out this year oh no it's Jurassic Park that's Jurassic Park (laughs) (laughs) Jesus Christ Um, The Matrix Reloaded was that the third one or the second one don't know 
I think that's the second one. The third one is called Revolutions, isn't it? I don't know. Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Bat Pearl. Is that the fourth one or the third one? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Terminator 3, Rise of the Machines. Was that the third one or the fourth one? I think that's the fourth one. It's the third one. Um, that was a good one. I enjoyed that one. Um, he, that was the last film Arnie made before becoming governor. So, you know, he's... Uh, talk to the high end. Uh, All that kind of business. Uh, the Last Samurai with Tom Cruise. Mm -hmm. Quite enjoyed that one. X-Men 2. Nothing to say on that at all. Oh, The Matrix Revolutions also came out this year. So actually, this was quite groundbreaking. They released two films in the same part of the same uh, trilogy in the same year. Wow. Are, they, are they both good? Both shit. That They're might be the reason. <laughs> they filmed them back to back. Um, but I mean, the second one's OK, but... I, I just always like to pretend that The Matrix is just one film. I don't really ever think about two and three. Mm. Uh, Bad Boys 2 came out this year, though. Yeah, Michael Bay, mm. Will Smith, and yeah. Martin Lawrence. I quite like that. I like the third one as well. And a movie which I feel is a bit overrated, everyone talks about it all the time, is Lost in Translation. It came out in 2003. Do you like that one with Bill Murray? Uh, I saw it. I don't. Mass remember I watched remember it, it jet lagged um, about around that time it came out I think I don't remember your favourite band was in the charts Gav Limp Biscuit. oh Hitler and the Hippies keep rolling 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 keep rolling they did rolling. that that's didn't what they? I still reckon that's what he said when he's directing recently an old uh, do you want to cut John Travolta no, said rolling, rolling, John Travolta's rolling. like are we going to cut and he's like keep rolling 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 keep rolling 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 oh dear well there we go well look we're in 2003 so isn't let's it talk funny about the though horror. Like, hang on though Fred, Fred Durst and all that and Limp Biscuit. at the time you're like this dude's cool as fuck Limp Biscuit man fuck yeah <laughs> and I don't know really you look, are, then all of a sudden you go well, for a start, that's a really whack name. Limp Biscuit, like, <laughs> that's just bad. That's really bad. And then it's just like, then the dude, and they're like, oh, okay, yeah, okay. Like, the songs are kind of still catchy and stuff, but then after a while, it's like, oh, it's quite a gimmick almost. It's kind of... Were you a fan? I was not a fan, no, not really. Um, but I know they were huge, and there was that style of music, like punk pop. With the, was really was the thing DJ and Scratching in it. And it was, I was in a band around that time as the DJ and Scratching sampler. So, you know, that was a thing. So, I, I, yeah. But no, I wasn't really a fan. Yeah, no, I wasn't really. But, but um, um, yeah. What? Uh, I remember going into a, a, a metal bar in Bristol once and they, as we walked through the door it said karaoke night and I said to my friend karaoke night in a heavy metal bar oh they're going to have to do Limp Bizkit and as I walked in and went to the bar there was a guy singing rolling 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 on the karaoke I was like this I predicted exactly what was going to happen this is brilliant amazing so there we go yeah. I also sprained my ankle that night in so, the pub what but that's you, what do you do I was moshing to um, House of Pain jump around me and you have nodded and jumped up and down to House of Pain jump around haven't we we did we went to see them didn't we mm. well no Danny Boy had the shits yeah so we only saw two of them yeah <laughs> now 2003 horror here we are shiny horror ready mm-hmm Freddy versus Jason. I was Monday morning. I was at that cinema first showing, excited. Shit, shit. Went, yeah, only me and John in the cinema. Yeah, we're at the end when the, the, they actually had the fight. Like, oh yeah, woo The devil, devil hand, horn hand, and everything. It's, it's a fun film. It's all right. That's all right. I watched it again recently. Didn't mind it at all. It's, it's what the fans have been waiting a long time to see. Um, it, it was sat in that point of movies with a bit had a bit of money behind them, but they were also sort of being done by like Michael Bay and stuff. Um, so I don't know. 
they are kind of what they all yeah, are. Yeah, I quite enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Um, Switchblade Romance or High Tension or Hot Tension came out this year as well. Yes, good film. Doesn't, really good film, really good twist. It doesn't completely add up, though, when you go back for it. Uh, I remember the garage scene. It was always a bit like, well, how's that? You know, but, um, yeah. Yeah, no, it's very true, but very, very entertaining and sort of a real first time you watch it, that the twist really does sort of kick you right between the legs. Like, <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. Uh, very good. Uh, Wrong Turn came out this year as well, which we've covered for our uh, inbred good film. <laughs> backwards. Yeah, yeah good. really good film. Um, and there's about five of those sequels now, isn't there? Crazy. Mm. A movie that uh, I'm a big fan of, Identity, came out this year with John Cusack. Yeah, good movie. I watched um, it again recently, and I, was, I remember watching it. I uh, showed it to Sarah, and she's really impressed with it. When I went to watch it, I, was, I remember thinking, I know all of it. I know I'm not going to spoil it. I know all of what's going on with it. And I don't know if I'm going to enjoy it as much because I'm scared about going back to Shutter Island and doing that, you see. Um, mm. And um, yeah, I had it in my collection, so I must have probably previously have watched it. But watching it again, I really enjoyed it. And I was like, no, that's staying in the collection. I love the fact it's set at this motel and it's pouring with rain and you've got a, quite a good ensemble of cast there I love the fact Ray Liotta's in it with John Cusack really good cast mm. yeah yeah you don't know who to trust or what's going on and I love that side apart from what is that actually going on which you find out later on um, I really like all that story yeah I'm happy they can't get out of there Some there's might... water they're flooded in you know some might say that the twist is ridiculous, but that's what I go and watch films for. I go and watch movies because I like to see something which isn't real, something fantasy, and I quite enjoy it for that. You could almost take it out, though, and you, you could have almost filmed like another little bit of an ending of some sort of something else. You could probably have done something, do you know what I mean? Like, to take it a bit more grounded. Else. Yeah, I reckon you probably could have done quasi. Yeah. Uh, another film that came out this year was Underworld, the very first film in what is now a saga of probably about five films. Um, I thought the first one was okay. I do feel like they've milked that a little bit too much, and it kind of goes side by side with the Resident Evil movies, doesn't it? Mm. Um, have you seen any of the Underworld films? Uh, I saw the first one, and uh, I thought it was ridiculous. Again, I thought it was, you know, horror, <laughs> mo horror movies for uh, uh, non-horror fans, you know? That's a very good description, actually. Very mm. good description. Mm. I like that. Mm. Well, you talked about Anchor Babe and sort of movies that, you know, money behind films and Michael Bay. And another film that came out this year was the remake of The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which I don't think is a bad film. Uh, no, no, I don't mind those films, actually. I think it's pretty decent. Another film which I know that you're a very big fan of. House of a Thousand Corpses. Oh, that's my jam. It's your jam, isn't it? You like that one? Yeah, I love that movie. Rob, Rob Zombie, love him or hate him. He he doesn't even um, seem to think it's a good movie. And it's literally like, you don't even know, Rob. <laughs> you just give up. You don't know what's like, going that's on. That's probably one of his best films. And, <laughs> and it's just like... Acknowledge it as a good film. And, yeah, and it's just like, oh, what are you doing? Seriously. But, yeah. We got um, a very, 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 very bad film directed by, um, what's that guy called? Um, shit. You can say Jeep. The one who's a really shit. No, no, the one that's a really bad director. Uh, House of the Dead. Yeah, uh, a thingy Yui ball. ball. Yeah. Yeah, you would ball. Um, Really bad film, well, House of the Dead. I saw based on a video game. Yeah, it's fucking awful. I saw on Amazon Prime. It's really, really bad. I, I don't know how I managed to get through it. I saw on Amazon Prime, Bubba, Bubba, Blubberella, um, a movie with a large lady, um, set in like World War Two or something. I don't know. And I watched. I was like, I'm gonna watch the trailer. I was at Sarah's. I was like, I'm gonna watch the trailer. We watched it, and it's directed by him, Yuri Bolt, because it's just like, oh. It's like there's there's a bit of money in here. There's like some scenes with loads of people dressed up in like walk, walking along in a, next to a train, and there's a, there's a lot of bit of money put in. It. Then it cuts to like these, and the trailer's awful. You can't actually hear any of the dialogue of any of the characters say anything. They're, they're, it's just music and stuff. 
it's it's like the worst trailer ever and um uh yeah this movie's awful it's it's an insult to to filmmaking it's an insult to a camera you know it's fucking terrible and and house of the dead is house of the dead is a piece of trash as well he famously fought one of his reviewers once in a boxing match and beat them i think ridiculous ridiculous because he didn't like the review yeah well, that's 2003. Also, we got Beyond Reanimator, the third Reanimator film, which I don't really remember. I remember the obviously the first one's amazing, and I, I, yeah, I, I yeah. love the second one too. I don't remember the third one very much. Do you remember that one? Yeah, well, I managed. I've, I might still have it. I managed to. I was working on a uh, an American uh, base in England, um, which is like there's a few of these sort of army bases around, and they're basically little cities like American cities inside England. Um, and all sort of Norfolk way working on ones, real like secret stuff. And anyway, they've got their own supermarket, and they've got their own stuff, and it's literally all American stuff. There's no English stuff, not nothing, none of the candy, Amazing. none of the clothing, nothing. The DVDs are all American. So, and this was back in the day, so I was like, oh sweet. So I picked that up from there when I was there working. Um, yeah, uh, I don't remember it though. <laughs> I've got a story for the picked up the DVD, it. but I don't remember the movie. I don't no. remember it. No. Uh, Scary Movie 3, Gav, came out this year as well. Third one. Uh, yeah, uh, that was the, the Wayne Brothers, I think, had passed the reins over to the Naked Gun peoples, I think, at that point. This is where I started to lose interest. It was still okay, but this was about the last it decent was one for me out of the bunch. Run thin, yeah. Uh, the jokes were getting thinner and thinner. They started moving away from horror films and doing like Eight Mile and stuff like that, didn't they? Yeah, and that one had Thingy in it. Who's, yeah, um, who's popular nowadays? What's he called? Dude is in Ride Along, Ride Along the Rise Cube. Kevin Hart. Oh, um, Kevin, um, Kevin Hart. Yeah. Um, 2003 also gave us the classic that is Leprechaun Back to the Hood. Which we are going to cover at some point, and I've not seen it. Isn't Ice T in it? Uh, he was in Leprechaun in the Hood. Um, <laughs> right, didn't know. I'm, I'm not sure if he's in Leprechaun Back to the Hood. Well, yeah, it's two. It's like number two, like Back to the Hood. Oh my god! Uh, so this is the sixth one in the uh, in the saga. Okay. Uh, the only person that I can see that's in it is Sticky Fingers from Onyx. You're joking. I didn't know Sticky Fingers was an actor in his in, in his heyday of everyone liking two or three songs of Onyx. Yeah. I didn't know he did acting. Sticky Fingers, he played Blade in the Blade series. He's done loads of acting. Are his fingers sticky? Yeah, very sticky boy. Uh, and the the only other film of merit, which I really like actually, and it made everybody change the way that they drive on the motorway behind log lorries, is Final Destination Two came out in two thousand and three. Yeah, brilliant movie. Um, a big fan of that. The first two really, but I do like that whole series hands down. Like they're fun. Yeah. But uh, so that is two thousand and three, Gavin. So a mixed bag, but some pretty decent ones, I would say some classics really that you're gonna to have to take back with us so house of a thousand corpses uh, freddy versus jason is a fun one switchblade romance and i'd probably pop um final destination 2 in the bag as well yeah i'll move on up maybe even sneak wrong turn in the back pocket if i could fit it in there as well so next year is 2004 eh? what's going we'll wonder what's going on then we'll have to find out mm-hmm. Um, all right, well, not a huge amount going on. Horror, what is what's so where are we at with the horror sort of roller coaster over the years? You know, so, what, what are we at? So, there is money in horror. We're starting to see those remakes creep in because we've had a um, Texas Chainsaw. Yeah. We are starting to see sequelitis kick in because we've got our first Underworld movie, we've got our third. Um, Reanimator, our third scary movie, our third mimic movie, our sixth leprechaun movie. Mm. So some of those lower budget ones. Also, Jeepers Creepers two came out this year. I didn't mention that as well. Um, so eh, it's kind of somewhere in the middle. There's that French Switchblade romance. So we got that sort of French wave coming in. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a mixed bag. It's a mixed bag. 
Yeah. Horror is a funny beast. It is indeed. We love it. Well, let's let's get out of here and let's go. Let's go talk about Hell House. Hell House, LLC. All right, you ready for this? I'm ready for this. Do it. Press all six of those buttons down at the same time. You ready? Yep. Go. Oi, 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 oi. What happened that night at the Abaddon Hotel? What is that? It's everything. Sarah, have you watched those? No. So you have no idea what's on them. How beautiful is this? Hell House. Look, 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 there it is, there it is, there it is. Here we go. What was that? I don't know. You have heard the rumors about this. There are no rumors about, about this place. place. No rumors. We talked about this. It's supposed to be haunted. All right, dude, lock me in. Hold it. Gatsby. Hey, man. How many freaks do we have? Three freaks. Oh, what's going on? Are you sure? Five. It was when we started sleeping there that things started to change. Back. You hear that, right? I'm telling you, we have to call it off right now. We have no business being here. Alex is more confident than ever. I think we're next. Go back up, go back up! LLC from 2015, five years after an unexplained malfunction causes the death of 15 tour goers and staff on the opening night of a Halloween haunted house tour. A documentary crew travel back to the scene of the tragedy to find out what really happened. Dan, do you like this film? Yes, this is really original. Um, obviously, there's been quite a few of these haunted house attraction fan footage films since, but this was definitely the first one I saw. It might even be the first one. Um, I really like the film. We managed to get hold of a an early copy of this when it first came out for review, which we did, and we both were really impressed by it. It was the director's cut, which that, has consequently just been loaded to amazon prime so you can watch the now the director's cut the one we talked about yeah i don't know what the difference is me and you have only watched the, the normal version for this review haven't we yeah but um yeah i i really really liked this the first time i saw it it genuinely frightened me at times and i'm pleased to say that the second time around I still shit my pants on a couple of occasions. Very quickly, to digress slightly, we never talked about hosts, did we? When we were doing a list of found footage films. Oh, because that, that came out this year, didn't it? Yeah, and that is a that is a product of the pandemic. A pandemic product. Yeah, I've not seen that. Oh, ah, right, yes. You should, yeah, it's not bad. It's only like an hour long, which begs the question, why not make it 90 minutes? Or 117, um, you know, 87. Um, uh, yeah, not bad movie, set pretty much on cameras, people in lockdown in different parts of the world, uh, doing a seance, um, and things start to go awry. Um, it's worth worth checking out, actually. But yes, sorry. Okay, I'll, I'll add that to my list. Getting back to this movie. Yeah, well, that was my opinion on it off the bat. What about you? 
Mm. Um, I really enjoyed this when I first watched it. I was just like, yeah, man, there's there's all, there's always been a bit of a hype for this film. Um, I'm in a uh, found footage group on Facebook, which got very popular all of a sudden um, the past year, and um, everybody's always mentioned it to the point where it's like it's, it started becoming a bit of a joke almost, or a bit like, oh, for fuck's sake, you know. <clears throat> um, so they went and made another found footage group um, to to get away, I think, from so many people saying this. But it, it's quite a well-known movie. Ooh, my voice went a bit weird then. It's quite a well-known movie. Um, in, in, in the higher circles and just the indie circles and the found footage circles, I, I think. But I don't know. I'm quite biased upon... Biased? I'm quite biased upon the uh the feed i'm getting through say facebook groups and things i see a lot of that stuff um it is a decent film i do enjoy it i love the whole idea of it and it's played out really well it's kind of almost played out a little bit like the tunnel have you seen that movie from um australia yeah and it's a little yeah. bit it has that sort of vibe to it, the whole sort of documentary thing going in i think lake mungo is a little bit the same as well actually um anyway it's a good movie should we do it yeah, so this is that other style of found footage film. So we talked about the rules when we t- when we discussed Exists, and we said how that film had the score and which just happened to be edited together, and it was a story told in the form of found footage, whereas this one has a reason for the found footage. So this one is... Um, it, it, we get a documentary crew at the beginning and at the end, and we do see little interviews interspliced between our main footage of, of these guys building this found... This, um, haunted house attraction and then testing everything and getting it all ready for the opening night so this one is a bit more of a you could almost play this to somebody and they would believe that it's real do you know what i mean it's like a, a documentary you'd get on netflix or something like that it plays really well and very realistic good great acting very natural acting was which helps i think yeah uh yeah um uh, it is very natural acting uh, the it just plays like really well it's really tight i remember sort of i was just jotting down loads of different notes as we we're going through it uh, and it was just like whoa like you know all of a sudden i was like i checked the time a couple of times and it's like well we're only like so many minutes into it like we've got through all this information it's done so it's done it's done the classic sort of standard structured like film like you've got like the different sort of at this point do this at this point do this at this beat do this at this, you know it's kind of got that going on uh, the journey and keeping you totally hooked though but it's done really well and you can tell like there's a little bit of a little bit of production to it a little bit more value like it's when like the fire engines turn up you're like oh okay you know there's we've, we've got that sort of type of feel and yeah it's just made well it's cut together really nicely um good film yeah and when i when i say it's original as well not only is it original in in its idea you know of a haunted house attraction that then becomes haunted um but also the the scares there's two or three set pieces which are so unsettling um and they're genuine they're just so original i've never seen anything like that really so there's a lot of stuff with mannequins and mannequin clowns and obviously like you go you've been on these ghost trains in these haunted house attractions we've seen you know imagine if that were moved imagine if that were moved that's part of the fun of it but then what if that is actually a haunted building that you're in and then anything could actually fucking turn around and look at you at any point becomes even more frightening it's really really well done um yeah absolutely love this film that, that really really love this film that clown is just just creepy yeah we should probably prefix this with anyone who has a clown phobia this movie probably isn't for you because there are some creepy fucking clowns in this film um, it's one it's particular clown that, it? it's just done very well uh, yeah yeah super creepy yeah and it's very simple mm, really simple so. well, let, well let's get into it so um, it, it's basically we, we start off with an interview where they show the ending of the film um, they show people running out of this um, what's it called well it's called Hell House but it used to be called the Aberdeen Hotel and people running out fire engines and as the synopsis mentioned you know there was an incident there was deaths um it's all been covered up by the police and no one's allowed to sort of know anything about what happened within there it was a malfunction potentially a gas leak that's all we kind of know and this documentary crew decide to start investigating 
you know, what happened at Howe House five years ago. They interview a few people that are involved in it, a photographer, um, a reporter. They, they look at YouTube footage, people that have gone in with their smartphones and taken footage of themselves in the attraction. Like you see with these real life attractions, Gav, you've been in some of these attractions in America, haven't you? Yeah, uh, well, I don't. I only really done the Universal um, horrors one, so obviously it's very, very to the book. Um, and these, these are those uh, more rural ones. You have got the ones which are like farms and stuff, and do these big events and things like that. I haven't been to them. I'd love to try some of these out. And at some point, I think you and I should, you know, have to do an America tour or something, and uh, go to That'd some be places. Amazing, wouldn't it? Yeah, it'd be really good. And we could go to some of some of these places. Um, yeah, they look cool as fuck. Uh, I filmed once upon a time under Waterloo train station in some tunnels a World War Two zombie experience where you walk around with a crowd and there's like a story going along and then all of a sudden the fucking zombie outbreak and the zombies everywhere and you've got to run away and stuff and go to certain places. And I had to film that and I went on it like seven or eight times. I kept going round and going round. I was, I was exhausted but I was just trying to film as much as I could to put it together. And uh, that was cool as fuck. But no, apart from that, no, not really. Have you you've not done anything like this at all? Interactive. I did one in I did one in the UK uh, about fifteen years ago. Yeah. Um, I think it's in Blackpool, uh, mm. and it was like it was pretty decent. I think I've talked about it on the show before. Each room was set like a different film. So one of the films was like a Freddy's boiler room, and it had like mm. loads of Freddy's voices and people dressed as Freddy popping out. Then there was like the exorcist room and you had a woman just as linda blair and she was sort of firing green sick at you then you um you went through one room a corridor to another room was loads of telephones ringing and then suddenly loads of screen um ghost faces jumped out and started chasing us um and there's a few other rooms and then the final room was like you come out and you think you're outside and it's like a swamp and then you realize you're in the texas chainsaw massacre and Leatherface chases you. You run out through a door, and it turns out that that door is a bookcase that opens into the cafe where you can then buy a beer or a drink, and you can sit and watch everybody come running out that door screaming, hmm. um, not, not realizing they're running into like a, a room of people just sipping their coffee and their tea. It's hilarious. Nice. But yeah, I, I enjoyed it, but it was very, very frightening as well. Brilliant. <laughs> um... At the beginning of this film, we do start with the uh, what you're about to see is a documentary. So we've got that in this film, you know, my sort of complaint of the last one a little bit almost. So I said, so this one is the other end of that that spectrum. Yeah. Um, interspiced with all of this, we even get a 911 call. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, as well. it's really nicely told. It's very, very well formatted in a very cohesive order. Uh, the document documentarians say that uh, you know there's been gag orders placed on anyone that is involved, um, so they can't really. No one's really able, really been able to talk about it. All we know it was possibly a gas leak, and a lot of people died, and that's all we know. Yeah. Um, and we we know that there's been a there's tragedy. a guy there that said he turned. Yeah, because you see all the bodies brought out at the beginning. Um, and there was a guy that said he was he went there to take photos and he was too scared to go in the basement. Um, but then they find Sarah. So these guys who are making this documentary find Sarah. And Sarah was one of the staff that worked on Hell House. Yeah, well, but, but you're, jumping, you're jumping there. Shows up. You're jumping ahead a little bit. I was just going to say, like, I do like the way with this, you have that, what's going on. Uh, and they're at the beginning, just people saying, I don't know what happened. Or not. And it's building up to this thing, this event. And all of a sudden, it cuts to YouTube footage taken from the actual night. And then we actually film that stuff. And we go back to that later on as well. And just some of that stuff's just like, what the fuck's going on in that basement? And it really it really plays out really well and it's very well done like leading you up into this then pushing you into that watching this footage um i think it's such a great premise um having all that hectic stuff and then running out of the place and uh, you don't know and 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 with the people still walking along going is that a part of the show i don't know and i love the fact that they don't you, you don't know if it's a part of the show or not and, so, and the woman tied up saying this is not a part of the show help me help me and it's like what the fuck um, I do a lot of that stuff. Then it sort of cuts away, doesn't it? Then, like you say, with the photographer. So what I like is that the first five minutes of this film is 
lots of glimpses, 911 calls, YouTube mm. footage, like you've mm. just mentioned. It's all very chaotic. Mm. And then it settles down to this yeah. little story about these group of people building this house. So we know that where this is going to end. Yeah. So they've just given us a little tease of where this film's going to end. But we then get to know these characters over the next few weeks because they've got about four or five weeks before Halloween to get this house, this hotel already with all the props and everything, all the electrics. Yeah. Um, I do like that because then it becomes like a nice slow burn almost for the first, for the next sort of half an hour or so as we get to know everybody, don't we? And you're kind of with there with them, really. It's interesting to get to see behind the scenes of these props and these gags that they do in these shows, you know? Oh, there's that guy on the piano and this will fall down on a rope there and all that kind of stuff. It's interesting mm. to see, you know, whether pick even when they're like picking that mask creepier than that mask, so we should we shouldn't waste that one on a dummy mm. and all that kind of stuff, you know, it's it's interesting. It's just stuff that us horror fans and horror geeks are into really, isn't it? Yeah, totally. Uh, it's always good to see that sort of stuff and it's quite fun fun to see this going on. It's quite a nice way to get us into the movie. And and also this film that first opening up bit going into this kind of makes me feel like it's like a Netflix film do you know what I mean it's quite well produced yeah um, it's well put yeah. together you're like am I watching like a Netflix documentary series it's um, done really well it's for the budget I don't know what the budget is but it's really well done it's obviously low budget but they've made it work really well yeah totally well, like I say, we then meet Sarah, who was one of the, the staff, one of the guys who helped to build Howl House. And she looks really out of it. She's very distant. And she agrees to be interviewed by this documentary crew. Yeah. And um, they say, so, you know, what happened? She's like, I've never talked to anybody about what really happened. And then she just puts this big bag on the table. And they said, well, what's that? She said... It's tapes it's just loads of tapes loads of footage and it's revealed that they basically recorded about four weeks worth of them driving to the venue getting everything set up they've documented everything like like you would because this is their what this is what they do they do this around america they go to different places they buy old abandoned buildings up turn them into haunted house attraction for halloween week and then move on and do it again somewhere else, and then do it again somewhere else. And they're kind of good at it, and they always want to learn from what they've done in the past. So it makes sense why they'd want to document it all. Yeah. You know, we've got a reason for them to have everything on footage, which is good. It's yeah. what we need. Yeah. Um, so we start the story there, really, with the guys driving along, and there's some tension between some of them, which we get more to in a, as we get into the film. You know, a couple of one of them is a couple. There's, again, a bit of another pervy guy who's a bit of a, a loose cannon. Um, and they arrive at the, the hotel eventually, and it's really creepy looking in there. There's loads of um, old food and books and bottles of wine that have all gone off. And it was a real hotel at one point. And they wonder what the history of this hotel was. And again, that isn't revealed at the moment. But no. one of them does know the history, don't they? We may as well spoil this film. Because we're going to spoil yeah, this yeah. film. Yeah, so what was the history well, then, Carl? Well it's, well, it's a portal to hell, isn't it, this house? Yeah, so basically... Because you like haven't one seen, of these hotels you you haven't seen part two and part three. Yeah, I haven't. No. So, yes. <laughs> I don't mind if you spoil them, though. Yeah. But it's almost like a I bit, don't mind if you spoil them. I mean, well, that's it. It's essentially that. It's like hell's there, basically. And it's it's just sort of it's such a coincidence that they go and make this hell house, and it happens to be hell there, isn't it? Well, Aberdeen or Aberdeen, as the hotel is called, is actually the name of a demon that guards the gateway to hell. Uh, um, so that's kind of that's something that is in the trivia, um, which kind of gives things away. Right. But this hotel's got a bad rep. A lot, lot of the customers died or went missing, and eventually the owner of the hotel hung himself and was found hanging. And you actually see what they say is real police um, photos of him hanging as well. Um, so it's got a really bad place, but these guys don't know this yet. Only one of them knows that. As far as they know, the most of them, it's just a rundown old hotel, and they're going to turn it into this badass haunted house attraction and it's not a um, huge crew so they've got a lot of work ahead of them because surely 
And they're saying, obviously, they're doing a, making an LLC company, so there's like no particular person gets gets sued um, if it all goes shit. Um, but like, uh, surely they need to do a lot of work to make it safe. People just walking around so they don't fucking put their hole through floors and stuff because it looks like it looks really fucked. There's not even any electricity at this point. Hmm. So one of the guys, the electrician, is has got to get everything together with the electrics. Not to mention they've got to tidy it up, get all the props in, set everything up. So they got they got about three or four weeks before Halloween, but um, they're going to have to work really hard to to get everything up. So while they're exploring, they sort of question whether or not they should stay there that night. And they're all sort of no, no way. There's no electricity. It's too creepy. Um, they get a weird noise on the walkie-talkie. So that's a little glimpse into something strange, perhaps. They go into the basement. Um, and as they go down into the basement, we get this weird moment where the footage rewinds and pauses to show us that there's a figure in a black cloak. It stood in the corner watching them. Yeah. It's quite creepy, isn't it? Yeah. Quite creepy. 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 They go into the basement and... As soon as they walk into the basement, I would have left that place. Because if you walk anywhere and the basement has a giant pentagram painted on the wall with stacks of Bibles everywhere, first thing I'm going to do is say, and I'm off. See you guys. Goodbye. Yeah. But they don't. They don't do it. Why not? Clearly, that is your... No, I'm out. No one questions it. What, finding all the clowns? Clowns? <laughs> what, did they, what did they find? Bibles. Oh, yeah, when they're looking around the house, they're upstairs. Yeah. Can, you, can you hear me okay? <laughs> I smell toast. <laughs> I said, oh, I'm going to The thing wrong. is, no, the thing is, I'll tell you what, the thing is with this film, I wrote huge, I didn't write huge notes, I wrote a lot of notes, a uh, lot of pointers, um, really detailed. I'm trying to keep it, keep with you. Okay, well, why don't you take it? No, I don't know where I'm at, you keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, look, let's move forward because we've got listeners. So um, the electricity, <laughs> they get the electricity running and when they get the electricity running, they decide we're going to start sleeping here then. Again, fuck that. I would not be sleeping in this place, but whatever. So yeah, they yeah. discussed the previous haunted house projects that they worked on together. See, at least in the other um, movie, they were more clever and they, they slept in the car for the first night. Yeah. You think you'd well, do they a talk hotel, about, um, it oh, kind yeah. of, it uh, kind of, it really kind of does make it come across as quite a reckless sort of group who are just going to probably del boy it and cut corners to get it open. Do you know what I mean? Which essentially they are a little yeah. bit because it's, I know it's budget wise, but when it comes to safety and stuff, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, boring stuff. Well, they do. They do have a bit of a conversation about CCTV um, because they've got CCTV up all over the place so that they can keep an eye on the people travelling through as they head on out the, the exit. Yeah. But but they realise that there's no reception for or electricity that they can get the cameras into the basement, which means the girl who's going to be chained up in her underwear, basically, for the final sort of part of the, the attraction, the, the thing is going to be quite vulnerable. Probably should have a camera on. Yeah, it's it, even instead, if you get say, another camera just filming there, even if it's not a live stream to you, you should have a camera there because you've just got this. There, there. I couldn't believe it. This girl's like tied up. She's gonna be damsel in distress, tied up. But then he goes up and he cuts her uh, her nighty open, so she's in her bra and her underwear, and um. And they just look to the clown dude, and they're like, oh, you, have you got this? You're right. He's like, yeah, yeah, no worries, because they've got some local help coming into work, because they had to apply for these people to come and do these jobs, like, locally, which you would do in these places. And, um, yeah, it just relying on this one guy to look after, but no camera. And later on, he's just like, fuck this, and she's going, Henry, where are you going? Do you know what I mean, whatever his name is. So you, yeah, so you should he, have a camera So they basically... 
Well, their way around it is, don't worry, we'll just imply a bi- employ a big guy, dress him as a clown, sit him in the corner, and people think he's a mannequin. If anything kicks off, he'll look after her. So that's their kind of thinking, really, for that. It's crazy. That sounds great. Yeah. So they start setting up all the props. Um, one of the props is a piano demon called Hector that sits at the piano, and um, one of the guys sits next to him and plays the little ding, 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 which comes back to haunt us later on, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, and we get our first sort of creepy moment really now, where um, a person speaks. So I think it's Paul that's talking to the camera at night time and his bedroom door is just open a little bit behind him and while he's talking to the camera about you know well this is what we've done so far this is what we're doing this we is what's happening with the call this bed cam diary because we come back to this a couple of times bed cam diary okay mm. and while he's talking we do see someone walk into the bedroom behind him and mm. after a while he's like whoa who the fuck is that is sarah is that you sarah and, and they, they don't speak out. to him or say anything and he's he's does he sleepwalk in and they just walk off and he says to the camera that was fucking creepy and that's the kind of that really and it's kind of like so a that's red, our first red silhouetted door in the background and the angle stuff is like a Dario Argento film or something it's very cool mm. well the actors arrive the next morning so they've got the actors arriving and they're going to start auditioning well not auditioning them they kind of already got the jobs ready but they're going to start walking through what they want them to do as part of their role. One of them's going to work behind the bar. One of them's going to tell people to come in. Another one's going to be the damsel in distress, all that kind of stuff. So they've all got roles to play. And we cut back to an interview now, away from the main story, where a, the photographer tells of a policeman who gave him some information um, who said he walked in the door. Um, he was the first one of the first people on scene. And the first thing he saw was one of the guys who ran the attraction with a self-induced throat slitting wound, which so we know someone's going to get their throat slit. Call back later on. Ooh. There we go. So Joey, uh, oh, and also Joey, the clown, the big fat clown that they employ to look after Sarah in the basement. They also mention that he is one of the few survivors, but he was found hung in his own bathroom nine days after the incident oh really i didn't catch that Mm, yeah and this is where they say that aberdeen or the aberdeen hotel is the name of a demon who guards the gateway to hell i assume he watched stuff which made him go insane he definitely saw some creepy ass shit that's Mm. for sure yeah we get to see the guys preparing the clowns. So there's going to be a lot of mannequins and a lot of clowns, uh, in particular three clowns in the basement set up, just dummies, but one of them is going to be Joey. That's the name be, of my he'll be looking after first album with Hitler and the uh, hippies. Three clowns in the basement. Oh, yeah, I love that album. It's not bad, that one. Sounds like a, sounds like a great album. Sounds like a Pink Floyd album. Yeah, but it's not as Hitler and the hippies. Hitler and the hippies. Yeah. Clowns in the basement. Three clowns in the basement. Yeah. <laughs> Could that be a Dario Argento movie? Four flies on grey velvet. Three, three clowns in the basement. Yeah. Three sad <laughs> clowns in the basement. Could be in the war. So they they prepare these clowns. They prepare a few more. You know, there's people hanging themselves. There's guts and spiders. It's your typical haunted house. They're getting everything ready. And Paul wakes up in the middle of the night because he hears a scream. And then actually quite a lot of them woke up in the middle of the night. They all seem to have heard this scream. And they decide we need to go down to the basement. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because right. they, they're kind of a bit like, what the fuck's going on? And it's, it's... I guess they're filming everything. That's what the camera's doing. It. Um, actually, yeah. no point to our question is because this movie goes along pretty quickly. Um, but yeah, they're, they're a bit half asleep. And it's like, oh, fucking hell, we've got to do this. And lo- like I said on our Patreon episode, when I talked about the stuff that I watch on YouTube with Sarah late at night and stuff, the CCTV footage and that sort of stuff, some of the stuff that you get from that is so creepy. So to this, when I was watching it, it was like, oh, man, it's just like that shit. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's really scary because um, he runs. So one of the guys is like running down to the basement and he sees the clown there, doesn't he? Like it's moved, is that right? Just the bit where the clowns in a different position. Um, 
you, what? No, it, the, the, your clan's in a completely different place. Not just the head move. It's a... Yeah, yeah. So it stood in the doorway, and he's yeah. like, oh, he's like, what the fuck sake, doing who's that? that? He... Yeah. Uh, oh, that's right. No, because he, he, uh, he's walking around the house. And he, um, that's right. He, he, uh, the house candidate, he sort of bumps into the basement and then sort of moves his head, um, and it, it, it's at him and sort of making him believe it's like the actor. So he goes running back to the living room to say, What are you doing? And he's like, What the fuck? What are you doing here? And thinking that's the guy who's just there. And he, he straight away runs back there. And I was like, Oh no, don't run back there. And he runs back there super quick. And the clown's back sitting down in the position it is and he pushes it and it's it's empty it's no one and he shows them the footage because he's freaking out and they say ah oh, whatever this is all, you've obviously edited this together just to fuck with us and they say oh well he's done a bit of a loose cannon, mask, this guy. You know. yeah, yeah, yeah and they say maybe we could use this as a gag like just let us know how you did it and he's like I didn't, this isn't me that's done this. This is one of you fucking with me. So yeah. there's a little bit of tension there. Yeah. Um, bit spooky, bit spooky. They don't believe him. That's fine. Um, what happens next? Oh, they go to film a commercial in the park because um, they don't want to film it in in the, the haunted house because they don't want to give away any of the, the frightening things that are going to be happening. So that makes sense. And while they're there, Sarah starts acting a bit weird. She goes over to a Virgin Mary statue just kind of, kind of stares at it, doesn't she? Doesn't say anything. Hmm. Hmm. There we go. <laughs> the How House sign goes up. Yep. Um, the sign's like getting ready, they, getting they, a bit closer. It's getting really exciting, really exciting. Well, I, I really and quite they go enjoyed down to... this bit because they did like test, the test run and they're queuing the lights and stuff. And I kind of enjoyed all this, the walkie talkies and getting ready because I, I kind of enjoy that sort of work and doing that sort of stuff. Um, so it's quite fun, this whole setup stuff. But it goes all creepy now, doesn't it? Well, yes, because he says, well, I'll test the, the tunnel with the strobe lights. At least. I, could, I struggled so, watching these strobe lights, to be honest, because they're strobes. It's a bit like, oh, I'm just old. Well, he walks into the tunnel, um, the corridor, and there's three dummies set up. And the strobes start going on. And then after a while, you notice that there's a fourth dummy. And he says in the walkie-talkie, hey, can I just check? How many freaks have we got in the corridor? And he says, three. He says, you what? Three. And he's like, no, there's four. He's like, no, we've only got three. And then he goes, whoa! And he turns around and runs out. And he's like, I, and he shows them the footage. And we see the footage as well. There was definitely a fourth person. Well, that's the good thing with creepy. this movie. Because whatever we see, we know that now we can re-watch it. And it's going to be proven to the other people. Which is so funny. Like, the main, main guy of this is adamant that the, the show must go on. He's like the mayor of Jaws. All this shit. They start, <laughs> the stuff they start, like, they're like, can you explain it? No, I can't explain it. But don't worry about it. Let's just still open up because he's betting everything on this, you know. Yeah, because they argue outside, away from the actors, and they say, "We're not going to." He's like, "We're not going to tell the actors." You know, we put a lot of money and a lot of time into this. This is going to work. It's going to be fine. It's just, don't worry about it. And they're like, they're like, oh. they're all very annoyed. They're all very angry. Hmm. We get more noises in the middle of the night, and this time. Um, one of the guys goes down the stairs and as he gets down there the, the clown uh, is at the bottom of the stairs and oh, just, he's like what the fuck what is there. this doing here so he picks it up just, um, just horrible isn't it and they move it and as they move it along in the, the basement they suddenly see Sarah stood in the shadows yeah just seemingly asleep standing but, there but sleep standing up. yeah yeah and she's talking, if you listen carefully, she's actually talking backwards. Oh, really? Uh, I listen, I could, yeah, it's like they've that Twin Peaks thing. She's sort of going, like, what is she saying? I wonder if you play it the other way. I'm yeah. sure she's probably saying something quite fucking creepy. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, she's talking backwards. They wake her up. She's a bit freaked out. When they turn around, the, the, the clown that they just left there is gone. <laughs> Yeah. It's fucking gone. It's and a really good they're suspense, all very scared. Really good suspense scenes in this. So they all end up having to 
with a Sarah who's just woken up sleepwalking and the two two guys, they have to then work their way back up through the basement, back up through the kitchen with all the props in it. And you're looking around at every little dummy and monster in that room thinking, is one of these going to move any second? It's so terrifying, this bit. Hmm. It's really tense, hmm. really stressful, but like done <laughs> so well. Yeah. So simple. But they managed to make it upstairs and that's fine. And in the morning... There's, it says three days to go till the opening night, and the, everyone is really, really stressed. Um, and this is where Paul wakes up in the middle of the night, uh, and there's a woman in his room. Yeah. This is this is the bit you and I, after we both watched this for the first time separately, we talked about this being one of the most terrifying scenes in the film. Um. So to describe it, go on. No, no, go on. No, what were you going to say? I was going to say, no, you, you describe it, then I can say it, otherwise it ruins your description. Okay, so he wakes up in the night and he turns his, his camera on. So what do you call it? The bed cam, bed, bed cam diary, diary. Cam, whatever you call yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And, he's, and, he, and he turns it on and he sort of looks at himself and then he looks, then he notices there's a girl just sat against the wall behind him on the floor and he goes back under the covers like a kid like you would why and then he opens the covers then he opens the covers again and just as he opens them she sort of turns her head to look at him and he covers himself up again and then he waits and all you can see is the inside of the bed covers and him going (sighs) and then he opens them again and she's really close to him and he closes it for one final time and it's agony the amount of time it takes for him to get the guts to open the once more and it's right in front of him and the camera goes all fuzzy and, yeah, and, and then it's it going to be yeah he, he, the amount of times i was rolling my eyes and shaking my head when you're saying that description it said what are you going under the covers for what at what point when you <laughs> saw that you went i'm going back under the covers oh you know fully well when you're a child you think it's your mind so the covers work you know as a grown adult like like covers don't do anything if there's someone actually there you think there's someone there you should probably like see what's going on i can believe it it's fun though but it works really well yeah, yeah it's good it works really well for the yeah, film yeah, uh, yeah and it's terrifying is for someone this is your first time seeing it you're like jesus christ my heart yeah um and then Paul va- kind of vanishes now for part of the film. Um, they find his camera still recording where he dropped it from whatever attacked him, that woman. And Paul's vanished. So they try calling him. Um, there's this horrible moment where they ring him and, and his phone. To me, this sounds like the signs you'd... If you rang hell, this is what you'd get. Hmm. Do you know what I mean? It's like hmm. all these screaming and... and horrible yeah. sounds yeah, yeah and then yeah. the phone hangs up again and then they hear the piano and they're like oh earlier he was playing that piano motif so they go they hear it again and they're just like oh let's go let's go that's him let's go and find it. it let's run to it and they're like that asshole man he's pranking us so they run to the piano and it stops just as they get there and mm-hmm. there's no one there other than the, the dummy adult? hector yeah. and they sh- and they shake the hector and it's just the dummy and then they hear a muffled noise. It's really good because it's piano a really again. long take, this as well. They hear the piano again, even though they're in the room. And they're like, what the fuck, man? Who's pressing that? And they think it's Paul fucking with them. Yeah. Uh, so they're like, he must be in the basement. So, again, always in the basement, Gab. So they head to the basement. Jesus. And there's three clowns sat on the ground. Um, three clowns in the basement. New album coming soon from Hitler and the Hippies. Thank three you. clowns in the basement <laughs> and they they find a little door and they're like look we've checked everywhere there's nowhere he's not down here and then one of the guys turns back and all three clown heads are facing him yeah so he shits himself and he pushes the other guy into that little cupboard room and he's like freaking out saying the heads have moved the heads have moved the heads have moved but the, the main guy says look he's really level headed this is why he's the leader he's like listen do you believe in ghosts? And he's like, no. And he's like, do you think ghosts are real? And he's like, no. And he's like, good. Neither do I. So this is probably Paul fucking with us. It's very scary, but look, it's not ghosts. It can't be. They don't exist. And they look back out. They manage to get the guts. And all the clowns' heads are back the normal way. Hmm. It's fucking terrifying. And they just <laughs> think it must be Paul fucking with them. Hmm. 
They do find him. He's in the basement. There he is, sat there. But he's very silent, almost comatose, asleep. Mm. Yeah. And they sort of have a go at him. They shout at him. And they kind of leave him there. And they all go back, all a bit relieved. And then they realise that there's no actual physical way that those clown heads can turn because they're, they're not they're not made to turn they're just stiff so they're trying to figure out well how, how has this happened no one can understand it and they 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 argue it out the next day yet they're still not like uh you know they're still not having it the main guy so i think it's tony quits is it tony yeah tony tony's like i'm done with this i'm out hmm. boom see you later so he quits, but they do persuade him to stay. They go and one of the guys goes and chats to him and says, "Look, come on, we're all in this together. It's going to be fine." I don't know how, how you'd persuade. You would never persuade me to go back to that place again after that. Absolutely not. I I, I struggled keeping you in the graveyard at midnight on Halloween once when we heard noises. Absolutely not. Fuck um, that. The, Absolutely not. The opening night, you get a prep talk from the main dude. What's the main dude's name then? Uh, Paul is the main guy, isn't it? Yeah. Or is it Alex? It might be Alex. No, it's Alex. No, it's Alex. Alex. It's Alex. You get a prep talk from him. It doesn't go as well because he's he's a bit freaked out by the whole situation going on. I think also it might be because he's wearing a waistcoat on top of a t-shirt. You do not wear waistcoats on top of t-shirts. It's a it's a it's a fashion. No, 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 no. Uh, that's kind of a Chandler Bing nineties look, isn't it? It's. Just something you don't do. Don't do it, people. I'm telling you right now, don't wear a waistcoat on top of a T-shirt. No. I'm sorry. If we may go on a tangent, Gav, um, one of the worst fashion moves I ever did, mm-hmm. <clears throat> I was about 18 years old. Yeah. So we're talking uh, 1996. Did you wear your jeans when back clubbing? to front? No, no, I wore, oh God, I wore white jeans. Miami Forest style. Yeah. Black, with black shiny shoes. Yeah. I wore a white, white sort of shirt that you'd wear with a suit, tucked yeah. into the jeans. <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on. I wore a leather, black leather waistcoat. <laughs> Hang on. I also had yeah. dog tags. Oh my god. And I had my hair parted into curtains. <laughs> so I have worn the what, waistcoat, I, look. What age were you? I was eighteen. And I thought this is how I'm gonna get girls. <laughs> You were 18, wearing white jeans, with yep. a white shirt tucked in your white jeans. And black, a black leather waistcoat. Black leather coat waistcoat, matching your black leathery shoes. Yeah, that's it. With dog tags. Dog tags. Were you kind of trying to do an 80s action hero thing going on? I don't know what the Cowboy fuck I was doing, thing. but I didn't. I thought... Do you this is what some of the boy bands are wearing. Right. Maybe. Okay. Anyway, I just wanted to tell you about my waistcoat incident. Thank you. I think everybody was is happy and thanked you for right. that. Yep. Thank you. So, yes, prep talk. He gives a prep talk. He, uh, you know, he doesn't... Paul still isn't there. There's no sign of him. They don't know whether he's going to be involved or not. So they're just going to carry on without him. He gives his prep talk. Big they Q's. chain up the girl. They ch- Big Q's huge Q's. Yeah. Loads of people. Yeah, the girl's chained up. The uh, clown's they chain up the girl. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, you got this, Joey? And Joey's like, yeah, yeah, I've got the keys. It's all good. So he's there. He's and all the, fine. The crowd are all hyped Still no up, Paul. aren't they? The crowd outside are like cheering. Oh, and yeah. Like, yeah, come on, come on. Open, open, open. They're mad for it. And they're going to make loads of money out of this. But walkie-talkies seem to be glitching a bit, don't they? Of course they do. Of course they do. Fucking hell. And then the first customers enter. 
Yep. Uh, so we get to see that the two main guys are sat in like a control room with all the CCTV screens. And it makes sense because, you know, like, we need a bit more smoke in that room. Or can you make sure those customers in room three go through a bit quicker, please? So it's good. You, you, there's a lot of work to these things that you don't think about. And I like seeing all this behind the scenes stuff. Yeah. It's quite interesting. Yeah. We cut to some bits that, that say at the bottom of the screen, actual customer footage that they uploaded to, uh, uploaded to YouTube. So they do start splicing in other sources now into the the main crew's um, footage, don't they? Just to sort of beef it up a bit and give us a bit more information about what's happening. Yeah. And as they start heading down, we hear lots and lots of screaming. And as Clo- Joey, the clown bouncer, who's supposed to be there looking after he Sarah, just he just that's running out. <laughs> He's fucking done and with And you can hear her saying, Joey, the Joey, the woman that's tied up. Well, you got these, like, dudes with capes. And another guy just well, yeah. heading towards the woman. It, but then it kind of cuts with, like, what the fuck's going to happen there? Well, actually, you only see one guy with a cloak on initially. I am going to say. And then when they turn the camera back around, there's about four of them. Yeah, I am going to say it's a little cliche having people in black capes. It could have been something else i you know just saying but it's still we've, cool we've certainly never done that in any of the foot films we've made exactly <laughs> white ones would have been good like the void oh cool then that's a big clan actually yeah. yeah yeah forget that we've got a head but cam. anyway these demons appear yeah because we've got this head cam going around the house as well which is cut with the outside footage and going back and forward so it's kind of cool like the way it's made Do you, you know it's a good lot of energy to the editing yeah it gets really exciting um now because we're into the the final little last part really you know we these guys have appeared they seem to kill sarah we don't really see what's happened um we most of the the customers have escaped or got out, but there's a few people still left, and we get to see some of them trying all the doors, and all the different doors are locked. And one of the guys says, "Well, the only way out is through the basement because the main exit is out through the basement. That was supposed to be the way we leave." So they they try to to go out to the basement. And we see the grim the glimpse of some kind of creature or something, and uh, and then they head up to the basement instead. And, and Alex is hanging now. He's being just hung. Like the main owner of the hotel. I think yeah. I remember Kate giving us a note or maybe just me a note saying, say, being hung, not hanging. Yeah, that's true. Um, and there's loads more of these cloaked figures. And all we see is some swinging legs near the camera. Yeah. And that's kind of the footage, really. We then cut back, we to, cut back Sarah to Sarah woman. being interviewed. And she, it has been yeah. interspliced with her. Uh, 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 shots of her and that camera throughout it of her just giving us her what was going on as we go this is why this movie's really well put together I really enjoy it I think it's well crafted I'm going to watch the second one after we finish recording I think actually before bed um, and it cuts back to her I now I have guts to watch it uh, is it as scary as this one um, I can't remember specifically so that's why I'm going to watch it again um oh. Brilliant. Um, yeah, so she says, uh, you know, uh, they put the camera down and they can hear her, the, the, the audio still recording. And she says, you you guys should really come out, come out to this. You should really, you know, go check out the house. Yeah, it's really subtle, really. And she whispered, says isn't it? what room she's going to be in at the hotel. And they're like, okay, cool, no worries. So the camera yeah, still says, stays recording. She says, Yeah, and the, ca- and the camera's still recording. And they're just like, let's break into the house. And they're like, are you... Are you crazy no, no, let's just do it let's break into the house and um they go to the hotel to just say like leave a note for her sarah and stuff and um she they're like nope there's no sarah here and we don't have a room of that number yeah yeah the room receptionist says there's no 2c there's no letters with our rooms and there's no sarah at this hotel and they're like oh weird yeah. oh well yeah so they go to the hotel. Go on, they go to the hotel. And they... Uh, break in. Go up, break into the uh, hotel like they weren't going to, but they're going to do it. And they're walking around. And then they find... Whoa, they're like, that's the room number. 
what the fuck? Well, before they get to the room, I quite I quite like the fact that they're sort of going, oh, look, I that's the bit the, in the footage where the guy not that like, over, the there's the blood. And... The interviewer, well, yes, the interviewer, she's very hyped. Just go, come on, come check this out. And the, the, the cameraman's just like, man, I'm not going down to that basement. It's just... Let's just get out of here. Like, he's not that interested. She's way enthusiastic. He draws the line at the basement, and she's like, fine, if you don't want to go in the basement, then we won't. Here's a staircase, uh, so let's go up. So she like, listens to it. Yeah, so they go up. And that's where they go, oh, look, there's a r- 2C on the room. Yeah. That's weird. And they walk in there, and Sarah's sitting with her back to them on the bed. Yeah. And she turns around... And she's got has she got blood on her face when she turns around. Uh, yes, she's looking a bit messed up. Yeah, and suddenly, loads of cloaked figures appear, and the door shut in the hotel room. And then it just ends with Paul's piano motif playing. Yes, downstairs. Yes. Then they check the additional footage, which is being catalogued. And they do find that footage of um, that guy who slit his own throat and killed one of the other girls, don't they, as well? Yeah, it's Paul. Paul's the one that slits his own throat. That's right. Yeah, it's pretty gnarly because he kills that girl on camera mm. and then he stands up and you see, you hit, you don't see what he's doing so you can only see his legs and then you hear like a, a ripping sound and then all this blood just falls on the ground and he then he collapses. Now, this is the moment where Alice walked in and she, she wanted me to mention that she just got back from Christmas shopping walked into the room and I, that bit was happening with Paul and so the only scene she really saw was that and then the scene in Sarah's hotel room with the cloaked figures appearing and then all the men appearing and, and that was the end and she said Christ I only watched seven minutes of that film and I already shit myself I, I would never watch that whole film she said you can mention that in your podcast if you like <laughs> so I have so I have uh, and I agree with her because I put myself through the entire film twice now, and it's it's quite very well done. It's not it takes a lot to scare me these days, but this really creeps me out. I guess it's mannequins, clowns, haunted house, throw in real demons as well. It's pretty good stuff. Really well done. Hmm. No, it's not finished there though. And that what happens next? Well, once he slits his throat. Um, you think that's that's where the film's going to end, but it doesn't, does it? It goes back to them arriving at the house. And then they find the basement and the camera... And, oh, no. No, I've gone back to my... I've gone back again. Yeah. Okay, well, Paul sits his throat a little bit earlier then. Yeah, that's right. It's before we missed they that arrive at the house. And then it, then yeah, it yeah, ends yeah, that's in the hotel got room. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then the last thing, which is really creepy, is you hear that piano playing that same piano tune, and then that's the end credit. And it has the thing saying they've never been seen again. Really well done. Yeah. Really great film. Very original. I am scared to watch two and three because amazing. The first one is so good that I don't know if the, the two and three can hold up to it. Hmm. Maybe do the director's cut, then go into part two. What I would say, guys, uh, is obviously Gav and I are really big fans of this found footage film. Um, and I think it's currently free to rent on Prime. Go watch it right now. If you, if you pay for down. Prime, that is. Yeah, if you pay for Prime. Turn the lights down now. Um, you know, turn everything down, turn the music up and just be scared because <laughs> it's quite scary at times. I really like it's it. It's because it's worked quite well made as well. It's like it's well acted as well. It's performed well. It's it's fairly tight. Editing's good. It's it's some nice setups. Yeah, it's got a bit, I would say, it's got Gav, a bit, of, bit of love behind uh, it. I would say that this is almost on a par with Blair Witch Project. Yeah. Because it's got that... The, the cast seems so scared Yeah. Um, that you almost... But that's kind of why you're scared watching it because you're almost thinking, well, shit, it, it looks like they're really experiencing it. Yeah. It's up there for me. It's one of my favourite found footage horror films. And that's, that's a big thing for to say, isn't it? Indeed, but it is a very good film. I'm glad we could watch it for this and break it down because I can see how good it is. The next time I watch it, I'm going to be like, just flown with it. 
I might watch up. the second one this week. Yeah, big thumbs up. Big thumbs up. Um, let's get out of here and see if Bill's around. Bill? Bill. Bill. Hi, welcome back to World of the Strange. Uh, thank you very much for that, Bill. Strange world. Strange world of strange. So this is a strange piece of news that's just hot off the press, isn't it, Gav? This this story. Are we are we doing what, uh, we, what we wanted to do? Yeah, we're doing we're doing the metal pillar. Brilliant. What the fuck is going on? What is going on with that? So about a week ago, um, not that it matters because you could be listening to this any time. A monolith. Okay. It's a twelve-foot-tall metal pillar found in Utah, in the middle of the desert. And people were like, "What the fuck is this? It's really shiny, sort of triangular-shaped, huge metal object just sitting there. No one knew what it is or what it is. It looks like something from." Uh, 2001 a space odyssey just sticking out the ground in the middle of the desert and it's pretty weird no one's owned up to it or said anything about it the army uh found it and they sort of joked apparently one of them said to the other one well i'll I'll go over and i'll touch it but you've got to promise me that if i vanish you will need to run and don't stop running and they all laughed about that apparently so the, the army were like what the fuck is this yeah, because they, they were going over, um, over in a helicopter, weren't they? And they just sort of saw something. They're like, whoa, 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 go back, go back, go, just go check this out. Loads of officials took a look at it. Um, the rangers at Zion National Park couldn't understand what it was. Uh, it's all very strange. And and then almost a couple of days later, because everyone was excited, all, it was on our Facebook page, it was all over the internet. Two or three days later, loads people got the gps coordinates to go and find it people that live near that area and they got there and it was gone yeah. vanished and instead there was a stack of rocks where it used to be not 12 foot tall just a few rocks in a pile and a piece of triangular metal sticking out the ground near it like a broken piece of metal or something so no one knows what that was or anything it's vanished oh well me and you go to record today for this episode and what happens Romania the same yep yeah, the same piece of 12 foot column metal has appeared in a field in Romania it's not though but it's not the same one it's a replica it's got weird symbols on this one like circular symbols all over it it looks but like, it's still a it's shiny a bit, triangular pillar. Those circles look a bit lazy. Now, see, the first one they thought, you know, it would be possibly an art installation. But they're like, it's, it's against the law apparently to put art installation up. And then it's like, is finding it, like now they found it, is that the art? You know, eventually they knew someone's going to find it with mapping, Google Maps and all that shit. So someone did it just for that and as soon as they did it but the thing is though so this dude went to go check it out and when they were there they they were where you have to park your car up and you have to hike for a bit they were there they turned up there's a big car next to them with a pickup parked up as well and there's a big thing in the back all covered up and they like and they laughed and said what if that's a mono a monolith and uh they laughed about that then he walks in they got there and it was cut up so they think that these guys <laughs> You've just ruined it for me. Did you? The fuck, monolith is the table of bullshit. What's going on? What do you mean? Oh my god! This is you can't hear this. It's the sounds of a video of it. And the sounds of tapping it. The one in Romania. Fucking hell! That well freaked me out. <laughs> okay. What if you started playing your video and it freaked you out? A video started playing, but I didn't realize I didn't press play on it. <laughs> so, 
So I just, heard, I wasn't even looking at it. It's, I was just, I can't even pause it. It won't fucking pause. It's, it's going to finish in a minute. But I just started hearing voices. That fucking well freaked me out. And now I can hear they're, they're hitting it, basically. The one in Romania. It sounds okay. like Alan. Sounds, sounds like. Sounds hollow. It's not solid. I reckon the one in Romania is a fucking. Uh, uh, a copycat type thing. Well, it's very interesting because if this follows pattern, this will vanish in a day or two and then it might appear somewhere else. Now, Romania and. Utah and America are very, 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 very far apart, aren't they? So it's unlikely it's the same person, but if it is a group of people that have decided to do some kind of weird weird art installation project, then it's very cool and very odd because it's got people talking. Um, well, the, the people associating it with Stanley Kubrick's 2001. Yeah. And if you look at the pictures of that, it, it looks very similar. <laughs> So yeah. my wife asked me what we were covering for Order of the Strange, and she's an artist. Um, and I told her about it. She said, oh, yeah, I saw that. I said, oh, yeah. And she said, yeah, it's just an art installation. I said, really? She said, oh, it would have been something something one of the obnoxious art students on my course did back in the day. They'd do something like this. I said, yeah, but hang on. They've done it in the desert in Utah, and then they've done it in a field in Romania. And she said it would just be um, some kind of joke or prank or art projects it'll come it'll be maybe a promotion for a new film or a perfume and I was like mm, I, don't I don't think, know she don't said to me what do you, she said to me what do you think it is and I said well aliens of course <laughs> she said and you're going to go on record on your podcast and Brilliant. say you think that's aliens yeah forever because audios well, can be kept forever man well I, I don't know it's like Stargate or um, they could be like big antennas that are sort of giving information out or giving us information you know it could be something to do with teleportation it could wonder, be um, what, gate, gateway to another dimension I wonder what year will be the last person to ever listen to the podcast on Horde Hill what year that would be I don't know interesting though maybe we, we, me and Imagine you could be like in, Bill and Ted do you think in a hundred years time people will listen to the show yeah Somehow we say something profound. I doubt it. I fucking well doubt it. Dan's theories on the <laughs> the, the monoliths appearing in Romania, yeah. linked to alternate dimensional travel, in line with the Mandela effect, and people are like, "Well, that's it. He's discovered the secrets of the universe there." Huh? make a good movie though The Monolith sounds great it's cool and I th I just think it's really cool um, it's got me thinking it's it's interesting you know I obviously will be disappointed if it comes out that it is just a group of people in different parts of the world doing it but also how cool is it that if that is the case and it's going to start popping up everywhere it's cool it's something interesting to think about that isn't look, the pandemic and everything look at, else look at the setting it's in though those two rocks the rock on the right looks like it's a face like a like a primates type face almost the eyes and the mouth open you see that the one in utah yeah the rock on the right hand yeah, side looking at it it's, like, yeah. it's almost like a face looking at it in distress yeah i can see that Man. and then the one in the one in romania is just in the middle of a field but it's it's Apparently, that mountain in the background is one of the holy mountains. Oh, really? It's called one of the holy mountains there, yeah. It's very strange. I just love the setting for that one. I love the fact you've got this picture of these two guys in their green, or three or four guys in their green overalls. Like, the colour tones and stuff of the orange like rocks and this silver object there is fucking... I think it looks brilliant. Yeah, that looks like... That looks like a photograph that you would have seen, sort of Area Fifty One, you know, yeah, from um, the fifties or I Alien. Yeah, it looks it's like that, so doesn't cool. it? Yeah, it really yeah, does. yeah, yeah. I just love. I found an amazing picture of it. What I'll do for our listeners who may not have found this or seen this yet is, oh, when the episode picture. drops, have you? When the episode drops, I'll pop a few um, pictures. I mean, a few articles. But there are already loads on Facebook popping around. Uh, it's just really interesting. Um, and we love this kind of shit, don't we? We love this kind of shit. 
so do you think it's aliens okay there's this this is what always happens it's like oh i think there might be a ghost in the house okay why 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 is the ghost there why is the ghost opening up the cupboards and throwing the stuff what for what's the point why why use that energy on such bullshit do something more more better it's a bit more you know um so what i'm getting at is why would the aliens do this if we're going to say this is aliens why on earth are they putting this in the ground what does it do well like i said i i think it's some kind of antenna or signaling device okay like yeah a, like a, an alien satellite dish basically maybe, that kind of thing you know maybe we just start it's funny we all of a sudden find yourself on a romania or well, apparently it popped up though didn't it so um that's why it feels like it could be some sort of copycat. But what if you found out it's like some mapping system? Well, that's what I mean. What if another one appears in another place, and then after we've had six or seven of these show up, we realise that they're all in certain parts of the globe, and it is like a mapping system. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it sits there for a couple of days. And now and some hicks in the pickup needs to transmit. have nicked it and fucked up the whole map. And they're going to bring the whole wrath of the the alien nation down upon them. That's what's going to happen. We're going to have aliens coming down there. Independence Day. Independence Day. Can you imagine if Independence Day happened with Donald Trump in the White House? Him trying to give a rousing speech to the to the American people. Yeah, he'd make it, it all about himself. It, it, no, it'd be a it'd be a weird one. Um, that's something I don't want to imagine. But, um, but anyway, let's 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 say let's say aliens did it, and they're, they're all good about it, and they're like, oh, "Here you go, it's something to have a little think about, guys," and that's it. There we go. I I think it's aliens. Scarf, what do you think it is? I don't know. It's it's a it's a matter of I'd love to think it's aliens, but you know, it's it's I like the mystery. I love to think of it as a mystery rather than really getting to think about it. And if anything, yeah, I imagine someone's just put it there um, to be found at some point. I don't know. But I'd love to just believe it was aliens. Well, the the authorities in both countries at the moment believe largely that it's an art project. So it's more than likely that my wife is correct, as she most often is. Mm. Um, she'll be pleased for me to say. Um but I'm going to go with Aidens. So, art project Aidens in Gav just says he loves the mystery. I do. I think the mysteries. Are, I'd like. I'd, I'd. You know, make a film out of this. I don't know how you could do it. But uh, the monolith. I do dig it. Can I, I can I can picture the trailer now. Actually, you know, we got another sighting. There is another monolith, ladies and gentlemen, and it's like next to the Tower of Pisa, and then then you've got another one like in London, you know, and then. Yeah. All these well, different no, places. You, you might, brilliant, wouldn't it? You might start seeing these sort of copycat things going on. But it would be funny, like, if this one in Romania vanishes, then in another country another one turns up. We should do one. But then again, we spoke that because we just said it to the, to the world on this podcast. I've got, I've got another theory. What? If it's not aliens, mm-hmm. I reckon it's Banksy. Yeah, I I know. I don't know if you're joking or not, Nat, because it's like that's the sort of thing you'd be like, yeah. Do you know what I mean? No, I'm not joking. That's Banksy what I'm saying. Would do some shit like this. That's what I'm saying. Do you right. know what I mean? So anyway, so we're, it's aliens or Banksy, basically. <laughs> <laughs> and that is word of the strange. Brilliant. <laughs> Thanks, Bill. Can you lead us out of that, please? That's all the time we've got for this week on World of the Strange. Next week, though, give me Ira. Careless pets. Weird. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was the end. Episode 103, found footage. It's definitely a genre we will come back to, I think, Gav. Mm-hmm. Um, there's enough good entries in it that I could come back to this again and again and again. So maybe next time we can take a look at sort of something like unfriended or, or searching or host one of these online sort of found footage ones i'd like to do that 
perhaps. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Cool. Good, good, uh, good episode though, and I'm glad we got to do it. What's coming up next? I hear you ask. What's coming up next? Gav, I hear you ask. <laughs> <laughs> ah, we're a finely oiled machine, aren't we? Brilliant. So well rehearsed. Yeah. Um, so, our next episode, we're going to squeeze one more episode in before Christmas. So, our episode 104 is going to be our Vincent Price special. Vincent Price. I can't do it. I know. Oh, I'm trying. We need to get that going. Uh, so, we are going to be covering two movies from the 70s of his. Uh, we're going to be talking about his career briefly, but we are going to be mainly reviewing The Abominable Dr. Fibes from 1971 and also Madhouse from 1974 it's going to be brilliant I can't wait to talk all about Vincent Price he's fantastic yeah we'll be good that means our Christmas episode will be after that that will be episode 105 and we will be covering 1984's Silent Night Deadly Night yeah also 1988's Richard Donner directed Bill Murray starring Scrooged. Yeah. Which I'm a big fan of. Yeah, that'd be fun to it's talk good about. good one, that one. Yeah. I love a bit of Bill Murray. We haven't talked about him for a long time. Uh, well, obviously every episode, but one of his films. Nice. So that'd be fun. Yeah. And then, Gav, we'll be into the new year, which means it's your birthday episode. Yeah. I and know. Gavin is finally handcrafted and picked two beautiful movies that he wants to cover for episode 106 his uh, birthday episode and one I've only seen once the first time last year and thoroughly enjoyed it and that is The Deadpool from 1988 that Clint wasn't, Eastwood that wasn't one I've seen that quite a few times but I I, I oh, forgot sorry. about it until you watched it then I went okay I'm gonna because I've got the video box there so I, I chucked it on and I was like this movie is amazing well it's the Deadpool with Clint Eastwood Jim Carrey and Liam Neeson yes that's right <laughs> yeah. also starring Guns, Guns and Roses also star in this film so we Ooh. have got a great <laughs> I can't wait <laughs> Liam Neeson as a horror movie director, Jim Carrey as a rock star, Clint Eastwood as Clint Eastwood, and Guns N' Roses just stood around at a funeral. Well, Clint is Brilliant. dirty Harry, you know. Yeah. Um, and, and keeping keeping the theme, down, what a the other movie that you've picked is Ten to Midnight with Bronson. Uh, exp can you explain this film? Um, I watched it for the first time myself this year, um, mm. and I don't really remember much about it other than it was Charles Bronson being quite gritty um, running around being a bit of a badass um, but I can tell you the synopsis if you want yeah go for it it was um, I really yeah, enjoyed okay. it I, when I found it an LAPD detective and his rookie partner are on the trail of a psychopathic young man who is murdering young women yeah and there we go and, and if I remember rightly doesn't he sort of kill somebody every hour or something like that I can't remember what it is um, or am I thinking of New Year's Evil um, yeah I think he does actually quite possibly something like that hmm. yeah well two gritty 80s detective murder films there which is right up your alleyway which is why you picked them for your birthday yeah so I that's what we're doing for it's the a, next three episodes. It's a great pairing. It is. Just like you and I. Indeed. We're like Bill and Ted, Starsky and Hutch, Cheech and Chong, and Bill and... No, no I've already said Bill and Ted. <laughs> Somebody else. <laughs> Laurel and Hardy. Uh, yeah. Uh, Laurel and Hardy. I'll go with that one. There we go. Bert and Ernie. Bert and Ernie. Fred and Barney. That's it, Gav. Got anything else you want to add before we do the uh, the admin and sort of wrap things up? You enjoyed uh, the episode? I did enjoy the episode. Um, it's nice to do found footage again. I will post this on those found footage groups I'm a member of. And, um, Good stuff. I'm sure some of those do. Look out. Listen. And let us know, guys, if any monoliths show up in your area. Excuse let me. Let us know. <laughs> um, uh, 
to- Tom's uh, written comic, Dead Bolt Films, his first comic is is now finished. It's out, and you can actually buy it. And it's um, Abyssal Albion is H.P. Lovecraft. And it's on Comicsology for you online comics readers as well. Mm. Do you... I received my physical copy, and I was very excited. Yes, I've got my copy over here. Yes, very exciting. I've got my T-shirt as well, and my I've badge, got, and my I've sticker. Yes, yeah, it's, yeah, it's quite exciting. Ooh, I was very excited. I've washed my T-shirt; it's drying, so I can start wearing it proudly, like a proud person. <laughs> Brilliant. I think my favourite part of this episode is you reimagining Bigfoot being played by Liam Neeson. So I'll leave that there. Mm. Uh, and I'll move into us just saying that, as always, we are a proud member of Legion Podcasts. Thank you, everybody, for listening to us talking absolute shit, as always. And thank you to Bo and Legion for putting up with us, putting our show on the network, because thank it's you. mental. We do this. We've been doing this for 103 episodes now. It's crazy. I know. Thank you so much for just fucking hosting it, you know. Yeah, for sure, man. Um, you can find out more about Legion on legionpodcast.com, where you can find out about all the other shows that are available on there. Um, they've also got a Facebook page, Legion, Legion Podcast. You can find that really easy. And that's where we're most active on Facebook. Just go to Facebook and type in the podcast on Haunted Hill. You can talk to me and Gav and all of our podcasts on Haunted Hill family on there. If you want to send us a direct message, requests, questions, anything like that, then we have an email address, which is the podcast on Haunted Hill at outlook.com. Um, we can be found on most platforms that you'll find all your podcasts on, including Spotify, YouTube, Podknife, Apple, Podcast Addict, Podbean app. And most of those have the option to leave a review. Please do leave us a review if you want to, of course. We only have a half a dozen reviews or so, and we'd love to have more. We'd love to hear what people tell us. Tell us where we're going wrong. But also, tell us where we're going right. But be kind. Yes, please be to kind. Yourselves please. Well. Uh, Twitter at Haunted Podcast and Instagram which is the podcast on Haunted Hill Insta and talking of that comic uh, that's part of our Deadbolt Films and to find out more about Deadbolt Films just go to deadboltfilms.com where you can find out about the many uh, short and feature films the comics and podcasts that we are involved in Um, they're also on YouTube we have a YouTube channel Deadbolt Films Uh, just find that really easily on there Deadbolt Films just as it is or one word on Instagram and for Twitter it's at Deadbolt Films and finally Patreon we are on Patreon so we have supporters on Patreon thank you as always to our Patreon supporters if you wish to become a supporter and donate even just a penny or a pound or a hundred pound whatever it is it will help us to keep the show going keep the show growing it's become a bit of a catchphrase Thank you as always to our patrons. Thank you so much. Uh, RJ McCready, Lemiao, Kate Pollock, Rachel Elizabeth, Sarah Kay, Kevin S. Fife, Jamie Sammons, Jill Smith, Matthew Godley, and Josh Myers. I said each one of them in a slightly different way so they all feel special because they are special. Aww. Do you like the way I did that? It's very sweet. And all of our listeners are special, though. Mm, um, you are. We thank you all, whether you help out through Patreon or not. So thank you, everybody, for listening to us. Yeah. I mean, on and on and on and on and on. Glad We're we about can... to hit our eighth year of podcasting. Yeah, I'm glad we can entertain or people. Seven. Yeah. Seventh or eighth? Uh, like yeah. Seventh? No. Seventh. I think it's our eighth. It's going into our eighth year. I think it might be going into the eighth. I think this year has kind of just been almost wiped out in our minds of it being a year. So I blame the monolith. Yeah, wait and see what happens in the crazy world of the monolith. The monolith. Well, there we go, guys. That's all from Gav and I. We'll be back for episode 104. We'll be looking at some Vincent Price stuff. The price is always right with Vincent Price, Gav. Brilliant, yeah. Nice. Well, stay safe. Watch out for those monoliths popping up in your areas and uh, be good. And if you can't be good... Be bad. Oh, yeah, baby. That sounds like some sort of really cheesy thing. I suppose we should sort of finish this up now uh yeah take care everybody it's a good night it's a good <laughs> Bye, night everyone it's a good night from you and it's a good night from me 
it's a good night. It's a good night from my monolith. Really good night from your monolith. Good night, everybody. And, and it's a good night from Bigfoot. And Littlefoot. Thank you for listening to the podcast on Haunted Hill. We will be back again real soon.